There we are once again connected. Hopefully everything is working fine. I'm fine. How are you? This is Legend of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, a homebrew D&D 5th ed campaign in which uh, I start with having no idea what's going on and then progressively add more things until no one knows what's going on. It's, it's kind of the standard way. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, GM and host of the game. Uh, thank you for joining us either live on Twitch, I swear, it's really live this time, twitch.tv slash encaf1 or via youtube.com slash encaf1 for all of the recorded vids. I am joined here by my players who are wandering through the 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 weirdness of Omesha in one town in particular. Not really wandering that far. Starting on my left with Pat. My name is Pat. I am playing Silas Marsh, who is currently playing Idris the Servant. And occasionally you might see MJ's head pop up as she tries to get into my lap. Wasn't there also Devon or Darren or Dalen? Or uh, Davin. That was Davin. the first one. Yeah. That's the one that got me into this trouble because <laughs> he, he's, he's hazing me. <laughs> my name is Marie and uh, I am playing Annie, who is just worried about everyone right now because people were locked or have been locked in a room. It's a party. What, what can possibly go wrong? And finally, a lot of things can go wrong. <laughs> oh, and another cat making its appearance. Yep. <laughs> I don't know where my cat is. She's kind of mad at me, so. <laughs> yeah, and I'm next, and I'm playing Medrek, half orc cleric. Currently in the battling locker. this like, yeah. <laughs> There's this weird like tentacle flowing <laughs> in front of my screen. It's just the furry tentacle doing the proper cat shark thing. Yeah. <laughs> seen on the edge well indeed what are we talking about well a massive party was being held at the mansion estate of the baron and baroness harquin the de facto rulers over this part of uh, of eskis an island in the lower uh, southeast corner corner sort of of omesha in which uh dozens of people it feels like hundreds of people have been invited to this party and are all showing up. It is a costume party or a masked ball uh, in which uh, both uh, you know, the getting to know you and the having fun are certainly part of it. There is uh, dinner and snacks provided, although people have found that the drinks may not be to their liking, except for Ocean, who love them. Uh, but also, it's seemingly business going on. And uh, a little light burglary, perhaps, as well. Uh, let's begin, perhaps, with that little light burglary. Silas has been creeping around on the second floor of the estate and ran into the governess twice, as it turns out. Once kind of just arriving and once trying to pick the lock on her door. The governess Awkward. was convinced that uh, Silas in the gay, in the, in the, form of uh, of Il uh, Idris uh, is nothing more than a foolish hazed and easily convinced new member of the staff At which point she decided to put an end to such foolishness and directed him through one of the hidden paths in the building to take a hidden staircase downward uh, to the servants management but Silas noticed a hidden door. And so, naturally as you do, threw up a major cloud of confusion, screamed in agony, and tried to slip through that door as the governess, surprised and concerned, ran in the other direction to go fetch probably the guards, or at least senior management. In the I will meantime, say that that is pretty normal for Silas. <laughs> um... Some of this disturbance uh, Annie had noticed and that the servants have now closed up the two um, little rooms, essentially, which are cloak rooms along the side. And a little bit of, of kerfuffle can be heard within. And also the guard captain had come in uh, looking uh, annoyed and had come to uh, speak briefly to the baron who has currently gathered a number of people in his study including Medric. 
The guard captain came in with a sour face and said something to the, the effect of, we've got some problems, don't worry, we'll take care of them, and then proceeded to lock the door to leave them locked in the study. The Baron, for his part, uh, smiled and, and, and basically dismissed it. We've had some vermin going around the building. That's a matter of, matter of course, really, but it's safer in here. I don't remember what his voice was. That's what it is right now. Going through the secret door in the upstairs of the building, one of the few rooms that Silas had not checked, is this enormous space on the second floor. Uh, a space which kind of resembles a library. It has massive bookshelves on either side and uh, a... Um, I'm just going to move over to the map here so we can see it, uh, as well as a massive collection of windows uh, at the far end, letting a lot of light out. Um, numerous uh, 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 thriving green plants seem to grow and planters around. There's a couple of seats facing out towards the windows, which face towards the east, basically inward towards the inner parts of Escus, uh, and are, are all... Um, tinted this this deep green which gives an eerie uh, color to the whole space but the most surprising thing you found was beside one of the bookshelves a dwarf a dwarf of you met a couple of times named of Jordy. last time you met him it was at the rabbit hollow um, uh, logging camp uh, where you'd caught up with gold and veer and, and dale and marta i think was there as well uh, a motley crew of of, uh, of woodcutters who seem to prefer to stay outside of town. Understandable sometimes, especially with all the crazy things that have happened in town. But as you found Jordy, who you now recognize, uh, you found him in distress as he lay on his back, uh, back from one of the bookcases, his skin slowly turning this, this uh, light shade of gray. As you realize his his rictus, his, his uh, held up body, uh, in which one hand seems to hold a book and the other arm seems to, or his hand outstretched, you can see the in the palm of the hand actually, is a uh, dart that seems to have injected into him. As he seems to be slowly turning to stone. Well, actually I should say rapidly turning to stone. But only a little bit of movement left in the eyes and in the... Uh, a little bit of facial movement seems to be what's left. We will begin there, with Silas seeing the scene and wondering what to do next, perhaps. Okay. Um, well, when we were given the extra prizes the previous night, were we given sheets that had explanations of what they do on them, or was it described to us? Um, I believe it was described. I don't know if I gave out sheets. Um, let me see if I have. There are notes in the journal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the notes, but Silas himself has a question about something. So basically, in the notes, it says for the Auric Balm, uh, which he will pull out, um, the using three doses of the balm can cure, is said to be able to cure paralyzed or petrified conditions. But in the paragraph above, it says can only be applied effectively once per day. Does that mean I would have to take three consecutive days to get rid of his petrification or I use three doses once per day? Ah, let's see what your confusion is. It is, it is uh, the, the effectiveness of the gel only works on a creature once per day. So if they got petrified more than once, for example, you couldn't do it a second yeah. time. But you can use as much as you want at once. Um, okay. Then that's what he immediately will do. Uh, as soon as he smells the horrid stench of it, uh, he's going to look around for anything that's like a cloth or something, like a doily or a tablecloth or something like that. Uh, okay, let me just move myself over to that map so I can see what's going on. Um, let's see. Uh, you can. There's nothing obvious, but you can you can 
dig around if you want to try to find something. What's, depends on how long we want to look. What's in those green squares? Are those plants? Those are plants. Yeah. Do they have big leaves? Um, some of them do. Okay, then I will grab a big leaf off of one of them, uh, tear it off, and use that to smear the stuff on Jordy because I don't want this stuff touching me. Okay. Um, are you trained in nature? Uh, don't believe so. Okay. Yep. You find some some uh, large leaves. Grab a, a, a two or three of them that should be able to cover what you need. They're 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 green and supple leaves, so they don't have. Um, they're a little bendy and a little difficult to do this with. So it'll be a little bit of a, oh, that's, a of an effort. That's perfectly fine. He's just going to smear it on one side of the leaf and then smear the leaf over Jordy. Okay. Uh, that it's funny. And I didn't even realize use... you had those things. <laughs> I should know. I gave them to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I said uh, he's carrying uh, them all in belt see. pouches. So he will use up three of the ten doses. Like uh, I said, I would have given you the the bag of holding if I knew you were taking stuff with you. Yeah. Well, as it, I mean, the the pouches put it right at hand, so he can easily grab it anyways, and it's all small stuff, so. Fair enough. Not a big deal. Okay. I uh, just got to roll something real quick. Um, okay. Um, and yes, the 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 stuff stinks, and the smell is permeating the room. It's it's the kind of it's the kind of stuff that. There's there's a reason why they keep it in, in a tightly sealed container, um, and it's going to take a while. You can even kind of smell it a little bit on your clothes after after a little while, but you start to smear it onto his skin and as much as you can can find, um, and you see that you notice that it it must be a magical petrification because it is affecting his clothing, which you can see is very uh, um, close fitting, dark brown and dark uh, black clothing. A simple cloak, uh, as well as uh, um, a belt with a few pouches. Uh, he, uh, uh, yeah. So you kind of get this 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 simplified outfit. He is armed. You can see that there is a a, a knife. I think at his side. Let me just double check. Uh, actually, yes, it's a very nice looking knife uh, beside him. Um, I'll have you make a uh, sleight of hand and a performance or a perception check. The sleight of hand is going to represent how much time it takes to do this, um, but basically trying to figure out how to how to move around him quickly enough and, and cover more spaces. And then the the uh, uh, the perception is something else. So sleight of hand eleven. Uh, it's going to take you a while to kind of smear it. You find the stuff to be really gummy and thick. And you feel like the most exposure you can get of this stuff to him, the better. And it does seem to be more effective when you put it directly on skin. Um, mm -hmm. He doesn't have a lot of skin uh, revealed. Yeah. Uh, said uh, perception was the other one? Yes. Okay. Um, you can tell that he's traveling fairly light. He does have a few pouches on him. Um you just notice that uh, at least one of the pouches is partially open, and you can see a set of tools not entirely unlike what uh, Annie tends to carry um, for her burglary work uh, in one of the pouches. Um, but it's going to take you a couple of minutes to apply all this stuff. It's used sure. to break out of places, it's not breaking in. <laughs> it has multiple uses, non judgmental uses. Sure. Silas will take the time to make sure Jordy is okay. Although he will, uh, as he's doing this, just take the dagger out of the uh, scabbard and toss it behind well, uh, Silas. It, oh, it wait, is, no, never mind. That's stone. Yeah. yeah, it's all kind of connected stone at this yeah, point. Yeah. Um, you, the best you could do would be to pr try to break it if you wanted to. Nah. Uh, but that would be very hard, probably. Nope, that's fine. Okay. Um, so yes, we'll leave you up above um, slathering a dwarf with uh, bomb for both of your own goods. Sounds a lot weirder when you say it that way. Uh, back downstairs. Um, 
Let us uh, let us start with Annie first of all. I believe you were talking to Dudek at that point. That's why I have you beside Dudek on the map, I guess. Um, but you have noticed that of the two uh, different sort of little miniature rooms, both of them have closed up for the moment. Uh, the one on the right had already been closed. Um, you kind of imagine no one else was coming in, so they didn't bother keeping them open and staffing both sides. Um, mm -hmm. But now, uh, rapidly, the one on the other side is closed, just after the guard captain has left, um, who you would see um, probably would have come out uh, on this on the front and then kind of walked around, uh, stuck his head in this door, and then moved down the hallway towards this way and out of your sight. Mm-hmm. Um, also, don't uh, forget, she just noticed somebody invisible uh, mm -hmm. and an interaction at the outer door with Sable. Right. Yeah. Right. Who is now going upstairs. Um, I am in a position where I don't know what to do because there's a lot going on at once. So... Uh, I heard, I, I also believe I heard chaos because the nanny ran out, didn't she? Basically screaming. Uh, she ran, yes, you would have heard that from, from inside the, the, uh, the, um, coat check area, um, before the guard captain run in to see what was going on. And then before they closed up, um, you haven't heard her since. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is guide Dudek out of this general area. I'm going to basically uh, suggest that we uh, go in the dining room, probably, uh, because something's going on. What do you suppose it is? As curious as I am, I don't want to get into too much trouble tonight. Um, D Dudek looks at you rather curiously. Um, I am going to call for a deception check because you do know what's probably going on. And Dudek is perceptive, but not, not entirely uh, with it at the moment. Doesn't know what's going on necessarily. Let's see here. 23. Yeah, I can't actually roll that high. So uh, <laughs> he's he's suspicious for the moment and then sort of shrugs, uh, if you feel it's best. And uh, you lead him over to where the salmon is still kind of hoarding those that batch of drinks that's there. A new batch of drinks has been brought out and some food has been set on the table. Um Melora also is there kind of taking back a few of the drinks. Angus is still there. Um, he's brought, you can see that he's nipping away at his own bottle and eating the free sandwiches that are being put out until he finally, when you walk in, you hear him uh, swear and throw one of the sandwiches down on the table. That's no good. Does the sandwich taste, taste bad? It's awful. Tastes like he's been out for a week. I don't remember how Angus sounds either, but at least he doesn't sound like the Baron. Eh, he sounds drunk. What, what yeah, can I say? That's right. <laughs> I've, I've drunk, been hearing drunk. complaints about the, <laughs> the food. Duda kind of steps forward. Oh, that looks unusual. And he kind of points to the, 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 the collection of sandwiches and finger foods and stuff like that. And you can actually see for a moment that there's a, there's a bit of a, a gray-green... Uh, spot here and there on a lot of them. And then as he points to it, you also see one of the pieces of, of bread kind of shift a little bit. And to, I would not expect something like that here. Um, Dudek reaches into a pocket and pulls out a wand, but he's probably not going to use it for magic. He use, instead uses it to kind of poke at the sandwich and indeed uh, a, a, a few large maggots kind of fall out of one of the sandwiches. Um, Ocean kind of reaches over. Oh, fresh. Grabs a few of them and pops them in his mouth. Chews happily. And enjoy. I feel very catered to. 
Angus, is kind of, Angus and Melora are both kind of like gagging a little bit. Melora's like, yeah, the drinks were off before, too. These ones at least look reasonable. She kind of sniffs at the small little uh, uh, shot that she has and then downs it. Yeah, yeah maybe. I wouldn't need anything else. Last one, I promise. Still, doesn't seem like the fitting food to put out for a party. Not one that's rumored to have a royal guest. It's all shit. It's all it is. And Angus kind of unsteadily walks uh, uh, past you out the door and kind of seems like he's going to haunt some other part of this building. Um, I'll, I'll warn Angus that there's something going on out there. There, there was some commotion. As long as they don't make me dance. I can't stand dancing. I haven't stand dancing for a long time. And he kind of wanders down the hallway. He's a little unsteady. Um, whatever was in his bottle probably is mostly gone by now, but you're not entirely certain if it's just that. This is definitely not the place where he would normally be. Uh, Melora kind of walks over to you. What's going on here? What's I don't know. Something seems wrong about this situ this party. Why why would they they invite the people that they invited? Why does the food Why is the food rotten? Why does it smell of death? I don't feel comfortable here. And do that kind of he's got a concerned look on his face. Um I've been to a few fancy balls and things like that, and generally everybody's been brought to the same place so they can be talked to and discussed in small groups without feeling threatened. But this is strange. I can't see them wanting to threaten people or, or produce this sort of garbage. It's still tasty, says Ocean from the side, notwithstanding some people's stronger stomachs, perhaps. It's it's a strange group of people to have brought together and something just feels not right. Well, what are we going to do about it? That's Melora. Right now, there's not much that I can do. If Medric and Silas were here, I'd, they'd be able to do something, but I, I'm much more of a guiding other people to do things and if needed physical uh, dealing of situations, then uh, being able to do anything without having any equipment. Well, I can't speak for the two of them, but I'd be willing to take your directions if you have any in mind. Maybe we could poke around a bit. I've been known to put my nose in the wrong place a few times just to see what was there. Mm. Uh, this sounds like it might be an opportune moment for Silas to send a message. Sure. Uh, as he's uh, dabbing down Geordie, um He'll just send it to all, uh, well, no, he'll send it to everyone but Dudek because he doesn't know that people are talking with Dudek right now. Um, he'll send it to uh, uh, Annie and Medrick to say, um, uh, had to create a distraction uh, to get away from the governess, found Jordy in the middle of being petrified in a library room. Maybe Gold and the others are here as well. There may be more factions here than we know of. And you said you sent that to both of us? Yeah. Okay. He'd probably actually start saying over uh, just to make sure people know he's at the end of a message. You can reply to this message. Um... 
So that was you. There's someone invisible going around as well. I have not been able to grab them yet. Uh, I'm with Dudek and Laura uh, and Medric and Varendel were brought into a room with the Baron. I, I would say locked in a room because I saw him locked. No, I'm just looking at a Who's the guy uh, just north of me in the room? Uh, just a second. So just north of you is Athanos. That's okay. one of the cult members. Gotcha. He's currently dressed as a sort of combination buoy slash bog monster. Right, that guy. <laughs> and looks quite and miserable in the corner. Um, I'll respond to uh, Silas. In a room with the Baron and Virendel. It does require you to speak. You can whisper, but you still have to speak. Just keep that in mind when you make your responses. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, uh, that, well, that changes things because I'm like close to everybody else. <laughs> as far as I recall, I will do. I will double check. Where the hell is my... It's, oh. it's effectively sending, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I most, thought you could do it mentally. Uh, okay. Most of the time, it's not a concern, but I think... It could be message. I, I got to double check. Yeah, I know message has to be whispered. Sending, I might have no. Uh, sending uh, for because I'm using the book, I write it into the book, and then their mental responses appear in the book. So I don't know if they have to whisper or not. Um, just double check here. No. Okay. Yeah, I think I was thinking a message. Okay. okay. Uh, still, there'll be a moment, a moment of distraction from uh, from mm -hmm. where you are. So just keep that in mind. If anybody's paying attention to you, they might notice that you're staring off into space, kind of working out your words. Um, so, yeah. Um, if you can relay that message again. All right. It was a... For, for, I forgot. Sorry. Locked in a room. Yeah. Locked in room with Baron and others. Baron says it's vermin. I don't think that's true. <laughs> okay. And keeping in so mind... So I'm not putting, like... Hmm? These messages are going both to Silas. Yeah. <laughs> seeing these two paragraphs point up, not to each other, so... And uh, when the Baron said it was... Uh, oh, we had a vermin problem. Can I do an insight check on that? Sure. Because that seems like a lie. <laughs> a noble would never admit to having a vermin problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> Inside. The, that means that they're not taking care of their castle properly and they take pride Foxes. in their castle. <laughs> twelve. Uh, I twelve. guess I'm distracted by sending a message. Um, you do get the impression that he was angry about it, but not entirely surprised. Which, you know, Vermin would fit that kind of response. Yeah. I'll ask Melora. Do you know a reason Jordy would be here? Um, she looks at you. I'm not sure if I know who you mean. From the wood camp the, that we were at that uh, when we were traveling with you. Jordy. The dwarf? I think so. Um, no, I don't. I don't know who the guest list is, but I, I don't know if anyone that far out was invited strange because silas just found him silas i didn't know he was here he's not <laughs> when you say found what do you mean uh silas said he was petrified correct yes or being petrified, I think. Petrified? Here? What did he run into? Yes. I don't know. Well, we'd best keep on our best, uh, best sights then. Something strange is going on. And at that point, a, uh, a patron, let's see who it's going to be. I'm going to grab one of the patrons here. Uh, it is the Wooden Goose, uh, perhaps trying to get away from Ardwin 
who she was talking to a young woman, uh, dark haired, uh, kind of walking swiftly down the hallway uh, and kind of nearly bumps into uh, you, uh, Annie, as she kind of comes in. Oh, sorry, just looking for some refreshments. You saw her come I in with I wouldn't uh, eat that. Uh, okay. Uh, you saw her come in with a wooden duck, uh, but she's clearly a lot younger than the wooden duck. Oh, well, that's disgusting. I don't know. It's not too bad. You get used to it after a while, I think. Most of your land dwellers do. N not really. Well, I'm sure somebody will be has to know about this, and she kind of leaves out through the other side door and kind of leaves um, to uh, through the hallway. You can hear her opening up another door, probably from that other room, and looking around. Who's in charge here? And then the door kind of swings behind, close closed behind her. It would seem that not everybody has noticed some strange things going on. I don't want to raise an alarm that's not necessary, but we need to look around a little bit more. Yes. Uh, also, be careful there's someone invisible going around. Someone invisible as well. Are you sure? I, I can sense when people are close to me. Uh, I know everyone who is close to me, whether I can see them or not. Interesting. Uh, and I've heard, I felt somebody brush by me a couple of times when no one was around. Um, I, I've tried to grab them, but make an inside check. Eighteen. Eighteen. Although he's putting on a bit of a brave face, Dudek is very worried and uh, uh, very concerned, and also kind of or eyeing doorways. And uh, reaching into his pocket and kind of holding on to something. Uh, maybe it would be uh, a good idea to to look around a little bit and um, decide whether the better part of valor is to leave for the evening. It might be a good idea. Well, I'm not leaving before Medric comes out, so I'm wherever you're going, Annie, says Melora. I'm staying okay. right here. Says, uh, says uh, Ocean, half mouth half full of food. Hasn't really slowed down that much. <laughs> you don't know what life underneath the sea is like. Apparently, this is nope. not that bad. No, nope. uh, I'll follow where the wooden goose person went. Okay. Um, so, are you I need to have a from... coughing fit so you can okay. go to. Well, well, yeah, we'll give you a moment to kind of catch up your thoughts, too, if you want to give any orders to Dudek and Melora. Meanwhile, going back over to the uh, room in which uh, Medric um, is... The, the Baron doesn't seem to be too concerned about uh, what's going on out there. He seems to have other things in his mind. He's got a bit of a... He's got a, a drink that he's drinking. He's, he's shared a bit of uh, a very fine whiskey. So a little a snort of whiskey for everyone. Seems to be a very quite high quality. I don't know if Medric drinks at all. Uh, it's a little bit difficult because as it gets close to your lips, it does start to uh, to steam and smoke a little bit. Oop. Uh, your inherent heat uh, causing a little bit of a reaction there. Boom, now it's a Molotov cocktail. Could <laughs> <laughs> um, y'all have a little sip? Okay. Yeah, it's 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 very good, and it, it has that traditional burn on the way down, which is even funnier because you kind of cough a little bit, and there's a little wisp of of uh, of, of white smoke that comes out of your <laughs> out of your mouth because you've kind of consumed it in two different ways at the same time. And I'll just point out to myself into the room, and like to nobody in particular. Hey, um, this 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 smoke works well with my costume because uh, and... I am dressed up as a phoenix. It's true. Uh, there are some appreciative nods. Uh, Athenos does move a little bit further away from you. He's a little bit blocked in by you <laughs> and Verendel at the moment, but he kind of slinks back a little bit, uh, kind of clearly uh, uh, somewhat fearful of your 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 presence. Um, and you've noticed a few times, even though it's hard to see him in this massive tangle thing that is his costume, 
Um, he has been kind of eyeing you suspiciously every once in a while, or more more like nervously, um, because you have a feeling that the tales of the Phoenix champion have gotten around town a bit, and that you can be rather dangerous for a lot of people. Uh, let's see. Only for the bad people. <laughs> And Ignis says Mother Hydra is not bad, so he's safe for now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm not going to go through line by line in terms of what the Baron is talking about, but he does seem to be checking in and getting to know people. Actually, he asks or he tells people if they want to take their masks off um, so that people can look at, at faces directly. He's perfectly fine with that. Um, it was my wife's idea for the whole mask thing. Um, frankly, I think it's a little silly, but we're all people of business here or people of, of prominence in the town. So, um, and there is proper introductions that goes around. Uh, the, yeah, I'll take my mask off. The, I'll uh, pull out the fire that's on. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Athanos doesn't seem to be, have any way to kind of easily remove this stuff. He tries for a second or two and then just gives up and kind of shrugs. His, his, his shoulders sink a little bit. He seems resigned to it. Um, Do you need help with that? It's fine. I'll just, I'll get it done later when this whole thing is over. Um, All right. So Athanos, you know, uh, and Verendel, you know as well, who looks a little bit amused at Athanos's troubles. Uh, it's kind of like, because the two of them are sitting beside each other, it's kind of like light and dark, where uh, Verendel's costume is kind of, silver and gray and bright color, a little bit of yellow in there. And he has this, this unicorn horn kind of mask. Uh, whereas Athanos is this sort of blobbish dark brown and dark black and dark blue thing with fishing nets and, and buoys and things like that. Um, the Ram, you, you, uh, you recognize, although you've never actually dealt with him directly, it's a Brugar. Um, Brugar Onyxchard is a dwarf from uh, Demaros, which is the mountain not far, not far by. Uh, by. Okay. Um, and in fact, there's sort of a little little pricey that goes, kind of the business introduction, um, where he introduces himself as, a, as um, Chief of Iron, uh, probably meaning that he does most of the dealing outside of the, of the, of the mountainside. Um, the Peacock is uh, Caden Cook, who you have seen around, um, kind of in, in the background. You would have seen him come into the Three Bells from time to time and talk to Sandy. Uh, he's a very uh, delightful um, personality, very very friendly, always smiling. Um, and you know that he's organizing the innkeepers to have some sort of common ground. Okay. Um, and also tends to be the one that meets the caravans. Uh, the Gull... Uh, when she pulls back her mask, it is a, a young woman um, who introduced herself as Gwen Osborne, um, representing uh, Nutmakers. Uh, it's a, a family tradition going back several years. Um, you know Wish, who's wearing the metal mask. He leaves his metal mask on, but he mm -hmm. does introduce himself as as uh, as uh, uh, Wish Wyndham, blacksmith. And the, the Baron actually uh, smiles... Oh, no need to be modest with me. I know that you are more or less the voice of the smiths in this town. And very well respected by all that use your services. And Wish kind of looks a little bit uh, uh, embarrassed, almost. Um, as you say, as you say. Um, Athanos um, of the clan is kind of the way he introduces himself. And there are a lot of people around the, around the, the room are kind of like, they're looking at him as, as in, why is he here? Um, and the, the Baron kind of raises his glass. It is good that the neighbors are here. I hope that we will be able to forge a closer relationship for our mutual benefits. And Athenos is kind of, it's mostly body posture because it's not much of his actual face you can see, but it has that sort of, eh? Oh. <laughs> ah, ah, okay. That's a series of emotions. The resignation coming at the end. Um, Emma Doyle is wearing the eagle's uh, mask. Um, 
and introduces herself as um, head of the shipwrights. Um, my family's been building ships for a long time. It's a proud tradition. Make an inside check, Max. Or I should right. say, uh, Medric. Medric is great at insight. Nax is very horrible at insight. <laughs> 16 total. 16? There's yeah. a look that passes between her and the Baron. Uh, you're not sure what it means, but it, it's uh, familiar. Uh, and then, of course, there's yeah. yourself. You introduce yourself as the Phoenix Champion or as the uh, from the Temple of Ignis. Or how, how does Medric decide to introduce himself to this room? I'll just say, I am Medric. Most of you have heard of me because of uh, my compatriots' songs. Uh, <laughs> and, fuck, what's the what's my title with the Church of Ignis? Kamar? Yeah. But wasn't there, like, another one? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that is one. Kamar is, is sort of your rank. Um, okay. The, the Kamar rank is, well, in, 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 in modern English parlance, it comes out in a really weird way because it quite literally means firefighter. But it's not that you put out fighter, fires, it's that you are known to be in the battlefield and on fire. That's the, the Kmar yeah. way. Uh, now, whether you want to introduce yourself as the person who runs into the battle on fire, that's up to you. No, <laughs> I'll just say Kmar of Ignis. <laughs> okay. And I'll mention briefly, uh, I'm rebuilding the Temple of Ignis in uh, Elf Otter. I was very sad to hear of the passing of the Flame Keeper. Uh, she and I not always no, didn't always see eye to eye on everything, but I always respected her vision for helping people, and I hope to uh, get to know you better. And from the stories I've heard so far, it sounds as though the legacy of helping people is well in hand. That's the Baron speaking. Thanks for the kind words, Mister Baron. Um, and uh, yeah, I do wish to help people. Good, it's good. like I have these like thoughts in my head, but it's like there's like a barrier between my brain and words. Oh, take your time. Yeah. It happens to me all the time. It's been happening all friggin' morning. There's a lot of mm -hmm. pages of notes in front of me trying to remember, remember names. Um, and I'll so, just briefly explain that uh, I like battle, but I also like to help people. So I thought this path was correct for me. It would seem that right now we have need of both. These attacks that have happened on the region have been quite disturbing. I've been unable to respond to some of them due to personal issues, but I am very much at the forefront of making the future defenses and making our region and our town stronger. It's a real shame that there wasn't any response from higher up. My petitions have gone unheeded so far. Then there will likely be more attacks. Uh, whatever entity is involved with uh, what was the name of that place that the uh, pancreas flew out of? Some ridge, kind of? Uh, yes, Cedar Tree Ridge, I believe it was. Uh, the entity responsible for uh, Cedar Tree Ridge, and I'll just motion like explosion, will likely get up to more evil again. And uh, there's a lot of interest in the room of finding out more, because the story hasn't really been told as widely as some of the others. And so the Baron asks you if you can elaborate on that. Now, I won't force you to go through describing it all. You've lived through it all. People can go and watch on the stream if they want to figure out what happened. But are, are there any details that, that you that Medric would want to emphasize, de-emphasize, or even change? Or, you know, aggrandize if he wants to. No, I'll just tell the truth. <laughs> okay. Um, um, and I'll, I'll sum it up pretty quickly. I'll say uh, uh, we were in the thing that flew away. I don't know if any of you guys saw it, but uh, it was some kind of organ. And a few weeks before that, when the water jet was still going, there was a giant arm at the bottom of the ocean. It's like there is some ancient giant titan being that somebody's trying to assemble. And I'm assuming the purpose can't be good. Um, let's see. 
probably Emma would be one of the people that would confirm a lot of that. She's down on the docks all the time. She sees everything very, very closely. Um, and probably Gwen would also be confirming that there was a lot of damage to nets and a lot of the fishers were disrupted. Um, the, the Baron does seem to get pretty angry at this. Uh, and still no damnable response. Well, I want to thank you for your service, uh, Medric. And it is clear to me, as it has been growing very clear for some time, that if this is going to be dealt with, it's going to need to be dealt with by us. I'll do whatever I can. Uh, since when has, since when have the higher ups stopped responding? Correspondence is slow. I'm very happy that they've sent a representative here, in Lord Montrose. But he doesn't seem to be responding very much to my pleas. Apparently there are a bunch of other issues happening somewhere else in the kingdom. But this seems more concerning. I guess our small little fishing port isn't as interesting to the kingdom as... To the kingdom and to extraplanar entities. Indeed. Nonetheless. Um, and I'll have you make a general insight check. This will represent kind of the, con the, the conversation that's going on and the Baron's uh, speech when he comes in and different things like that, that he's, that he's, he's maybe not saying directly. And this will represent Come a passage on. of time. Okay, let's see if I can roll higher than 10 this time. Fuck, 15 total. Okay. I have like plus nine insight, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're distracted a little bit by being put on the spot because you're kind of being called as the storyteller in this particular room, which is normally Silas's role. Yeah. Um, and there's also kind of open admiration from Caden uh, and uh, probably from Gwen as well. Athenos is hard to read. Um, Verendel it kind of nods along and you can see there's a, a quite a, a tremendous amount of respect from Verendel because he knows of what you speak, um, probably from talking to Annie, but probably just seems to judge you very well. Uh, Brugar kind of uh, broods a little bit. Um, the dwarf is kind of uh, quiet and, and, uh, and brooding. Um, and Wish is, Wish runs through a, a collection of emotions. Uh, running from the sort of, this is very dangerous to, uh, you know, probably my son-in-law was there. That doesn't necessarily bode well for the family con uh, consistency. Uh, and probably also a little bit of, of um, sort of stern nodding of the head, as in, um, especially to the Baron's calls for things need to be done. From the Baron themselves, um, First off, it's fairly easy and obvious to note. He really does want to get to know people well. And you feel, you feel as though um, the time that he spent away and, un, and not visible, uh, he regrets, or at least he feels sad about. He really feels like he's lost connection and he's trying to make reconnection. Um, why this particular group of people is not very clear, but it may also just be a, a cross-section of some of the people he wanted to talk to. Uh, and he does seem to know little details about each of the people there. He knows less about yourself because you're fairly new to town. Uh, you've only been here for a few months. But he, he seems to know a lot more about the others uh, and even talks about past projects and things like that that are going on. Um, he is also asking, though, and it, it, it you kind of notice it a little bit because it's, it's as much about... Um, well, as much about Silas almost uh, as anyone else, uh, he does seem to be gently probing for any information about people who are new to town, any outsiders who've come to town, who may have come to town recently or don't seem to be, uh, um, you know, or, or don't have any particular reason for being here. Um, you know, the immigration to, uh, to Aelthvater is pretty rare. <laughs> uh, and so he, there's a little bit of gentle, gentle probing for that. You feel like there might have been some more in there, but it didn't quite occur to you until um, uh, until kind of the conversation has moved on from there. Um, so we'll go back quickly to Annie, I think, at this point. Oh, shit, I was on mute. <laughs> oh, sorry, did you have uh, something? Yeah, I was going to talk to the Baron. Uh, 
is is there still time or? Oh yeah, if you want. To. I was going to ask. I'm glad to see you're in good health. Uh, I was kind of worried the first time we were here, me and my friends, uh, and your wife as well. She looks amazing now, but compared to how frail she was the last time, uh, what healer did you make use of, or whose services did you have? There's a there's a, a pause as he looks at you, and it looks like he's trying to recognize you, even though, of course, you've been in this room for several minutes. Um, like the gist of it is like I, maybe there there's like this really good cleric I can learn from. Can you get me in touch with them? Hmm. Type of thing. <laughs> Um, th there's sort of a narrowing of the eyes as he's sort of trying to place you. I hadn't remembered that we had spoken before. Uh, the depths of the illness was quite severe. I had to travel somewhat to get a solution. And it was costly. The affliction was some sort of curse, I believe. But it has been taken Damn, care do, of. Do you know who put it on you? Or? And he kind of waves it away. It, it's a personal matter. It's been taken care of. But thank you for your concern. But if it ever happens again, I can lift curses now as well. So just let me know. Um, and he looks somewhat... Uh, he smiles a bit. It was beyond the powers of most of the clerics I had spoken to. But thank you for your offer. I will keep it in mind. And I'll nod and wait and wait for him to change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> um, meanwhile, Annie, uh, I'm just going to move you through the map here a little bit to show. And I, will I bet up. you he made a deal with a hag. I mean, what was it? Open up the space a little bit here. Uh, um, so, yes, I would tell Dudek and Melora to keep an eye out. But if things get dangerous, get out of here. Um, very well. And Dudek kind of wanders off in one direction and Melora kind of wanders off in another. Um, I'll kind of move them along the map here a little bit. Uh, and I'll, I'll mention to Melora, uh, I know you want to wait for Medric, but I'm sure he would, if anything were to happen to you, uh, because of that, he would not be happy with himself. And I'd flee town because her dad scares me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and she kind of nods to you, but there's a look of determination in her face. Um, you're not sure exactly what it means inter entirely, but um, she goes stomping off towards the, the ballroom. Um, just going to move a couple more people around here. Um, as you're passing through the hallway, you do see the woman in yellow lace. Let me see if I got that here. Uh, it's under L for lace. There we go. Ah, uh, yes. Um, who had come in with, I think, Ardwin, actually. Uh, and just kind of wandering, walking down the hallway. Um, kind of the tall, tall blonde. Um, and you head in through the doors and see um, the wooden goose. <laughs> I'm amused by the fact that I gave them the names of their their masks. I'm, I'm just, at least I'm amused by my own complications. And you walk into what is clearly the upper kitchen. Um, it is much warmer in here. You can see that there are, uh, I don't have them on the map here because I didn't want to put every servant and, and cook. And mm -hmm. it's like there's a, there's a, I think I have two dozen servants in this building. So I wasn't going to put them all on there. Um, it seems terrible because I don't want to diminish their importance, but it's still, it's like, Gotta cut my line it's, somewhere. It's more management. Exactly. Um, something that I would have done as well is I would have grabbed a napkin and grabbed one of the sandwiches and brought it with me. Okay. As you walk in, you can hear the uh, the goose uh, yell or arguing with what looks like the cook. Um, the reason you can tell that the cook is they're the ones that have the most stains on them, but also look like they have the most authority. Um, they're wearing like a, a heavy apron, which has, you know, different, uh, uh, different interesting colors that probably have come from a lot of different uh, uh, meals that have been made. On that major table in the middle, you can see they're laying out a whole bunch more food. And the, the goose is holding uh, the, the, the food in front and uh, kind of gesturing, or not actually holding the food, she didn't grab any, but she's pointing at the stuff there. And the, the cook is, is sort of half apologetic 
half defensive, uh, and you can kind of walk in on, the, on that discussion. And you're carrying one of these in. You can kind of feel that it's wriggling a little bit. There was some sort of worm still in the piece of cake that you brought in. Um, and you walk in on this on this anger. You can see a lot of the a lot of the servers are kind of moving off to the wall or finding somewhere else to be for the moment. There are uh, people coming up and down. There's a set of stairs uh, nearby that lead downstairs, um, presumably to another part of the kitchen or storage or something. We're kind of coming up with with trays of things and setting them down on the table. Um, the, the cook is saying, um, I, I don't know why, certainly nothing we prepared that way and kind of angrily defending herself. And, and the goose has, has gotten quite angry at this point. And then when you walk in, both of them kind of look at you and there's that moment of transference of anger where they've been yelling at each other and both of you look both of them look at you angrily but then both kind of relent because they're not trying to look angry to you um how do you present yourself or get into this argument there's a worm in my cake and the the, the cook's like that will do it it can't be and walks around the table takes it from you and then uh kind of looks at it with disgust this is not possible this is not And the food possible. in the dining room looks rotten. Uh, and I, I don't know what's going on here. You you sound like you, you know what you're doing, but something's going on. I don't understand. It came from the same batch as this, and she gestures to the, the trays that have been set on the table, and you can see there's more cakes and uh, little little edible, you know, hand hand foods there. They look to be fine. See? And she'll actually grab one and hold it up to you. No worms. I don't understand what's going on. You don't understand. I've Food been waiting for do- I've been waiting for a, a party like this to cater to for a long time. Do you know how few people actually live in this building? But now a few dozen people are here. I get to show off what I can do. And this is what happens? It's one of you, isn't it? And she kind of points uh, a finger kind of back and forth between you and the goose. It's one of you, isn't it? You're doing this. Just won't ruin my reputation. What motivation would we have to, to do that? She kind of... Uh, shrugs her shrugs her arms. How would I know the the mysterious uh, uh, minds of of a bunch of rabble rousers, or worse, politicians? Where would we hide anything to to make a bunch of food suddenly spoil? Um, and she kind of comes back to you, and you can feel like like you're dressed as a guest. You're clearly on the guest side of things. She's dressed as, as you know, the, the work-a-day servant. But her, her back is up. And she kind of comes towards you with a, a pudgy finger. I don't know. Maybe you did something magical to it. How should I know? All I know is all the food we prepared was perfectly fine. I supervised it all myself. And at that point, she takes the little piece of cake that she, she had shown you and just stuffs it in her mouth. Tastes great. Tastes fantastic. Best work I've ever done. And she kind of turns. And there's a there's a servant right behind her and practically almost walks into the servant. What? Um, and kind of leans in and whispers. Great. Just great. Um, and kind of whisks the uh, the servant away. Well, then go clean it. The servant looks aghast and then kind of, you get a feeling like this is not their job and it shouldn't be the cook who's telling them to do this, but they go. And now they tell me that there's food in the wash basins clogging up. Sorry, you cut off there. And now they tell me. And now they tell me there's food in the wash basins clogging up the place. As if the servants didn't have enough to do. Why should I care? That's not my job. I know it's food, but that's not my job to fix. I just wanted to know if you knew anything 
I'm, I'm sorry. And uh, I will nod and leave. Yeah, kind of. But quick... Basically, I'm playing kind of the, the meek, like, and I, I don't want to complain because I know you have a lot going going on, but also there's a worm. Yep. Uh, kind of the lot. vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you kind of exit out through the door, I'm assuming, back into the hallway. And yeah. behind her, you hear the cook uh, turn, probably to the goose, and say, What? I, I, I'm with her. And just kind of wanders out, or walks quickly out behind you, uh, kind of escorted. Uh, the doors are those sort of swinging doors that are meant to kind of close automatically, but you get the impression that it closed a little bit faster behind her than, <laughs> than originally intended. Well, that was frightening. There's one thing that I've learned is don't go into somebody else's kitchen. No kidding. <laughs> um, hmm. do, 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 sorry. Uh, she offers her hand. Uh, my name is Celia, by the way. Annie. Nice to meet you. Um... I don't think that's normal for the no. food and stuff. Do you think what she no. said is true, though? Magic? That's the only thing that would really make sense. Yeah. I don't magic. Everything in there looked fine. Mm-hmm. The moment it, it leaves the kitchen is when it seems to go wrong. And she kind of wanders in into the, the dining room. I don't know if you follow her or not, but she's kind of looking at the stuff. Yeah, I, I would. Um, Ocean has moved on. I'm not sure where he's gone to. Um, I think what she would do is... Um, she hmm. she would just suggest to even if it's replaced don't eat it just in case something happened it's odd that this would happen the cook seemed really angry I can't see them having anything to do with it I hate to think that all their food is ruined it's such a waste Make a perception check. Oof. Eleven. Okay. Um, as you're moving about the room and kind of not paying attention, kind of looking at, at the table, talking with, with uh, Celia, um, your hand presses down on something squishy on the on the far back wall, on the on the the, the, the tabletop that's there. It's really mm -hmm. more of a wine rack, but there's not much wine right there. And you realize you kind of put your hand down through a piece of cake that looks perfectly fine. I'm starting to think I'm going crazy. You look back and forth. The table is filled with this sort of molding sandwiches and cake and, and, uh, and pies, pie bits and stuff. But for whatever reason, this piece of cake is fine way over here on the other side of the room. Can I look and search uh, like underneath the table, see if there's something there? Yeah, sure. Um, make it an investigation roll. Is Actually, with advantage. On the table? Or? With advantage, because um, Silly will help you. Okay. Uh, that is investigation. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20? Um as both also you... I'm going to take uh, basically what what I'm thinking right now is that there's something in the room that past a certain point stuff goes bad so I'm going to be keeping an eye on the cake that is on my hand as well okay um, as you and, and Celie kind of poke around the room Celie doesn't really know what, you, what you're looking for but she is helping to at least have a, the second pair of eyes from a different angle uh, and you're kind of keeping one of your eyes uh, peeled for whatever might happen to the cake. Um, and it doesn't happen right away. 
But as you're poking around and kind of looking around the table and then kind of sticking your head underneath the table, you do notice that the cake gets a little bit of green fuzz growing on it uh, as you get closer to the table. There looks to be something which has been uh, kind of attached to the bottom side of the table. It looks like a, a small brown leather pouch somehow kind of stuck up the under, underside of the table. That hmm. definitely looks weird. What is it? Says uh, Celia. I don't know, but the cake on my hand now looks rotten. So that's what's causing it? I'm going to guess. We should get rid and... of it then. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to step here. Uh, this is a door, correct? Hmm? Sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to, like, peer out the door and yeet it as far as I can. Okay, so you reached underneath to grab it then. Yeah. Okay. Uh-oh. Dex Dexterity saving throw, please. Uh, 21. 21, good. I just have to find my note here, really. Okay, yeah, 21 is fine. Um, as you grab the bag, the first thing you kind of note is it's a little bit squishy on the inside and writhes a little bit. And then as you pull it from the table, you notice that it's sort of gummed up to the bottom of the table by this sort of greenish yellowish slime that's very thick and viscous and then when you pull it and it kind of comes free um, you can feel the thing inside start to wriggle and writhe and then uh, it's like the bag inverts entirely all at once there's a little burst of of uh, of magical energy and the um the, oh, yeah, I got the wrong line here. There we go. Uh, the uh, bag disintegrates, greenish, yellowish slime, slimes the underside of the table, splashes down onto the floor as well, and there's this, this terrible smell uh, at the same moment. And you can see several, uh, what look like big, big, fat, thick worms, larger than what you'd seen in the, the food itself, kind of wriggling on the floor. Um as you're kind of instinctively brought back from that, you can kind of uh, smell it a little bit still. But then the smell dissipates, as do the worms, as does the slime. All kind of vanishes. Um, and as you're kind of looking, uh, looking at it to carefully, you notice this strange symbol on the underside of the table. Uh, you're not familiar. Uh, well, what languages do you know? Common Dwarvish, Elvish, Gnomish, Halfling, and Thieves Camp. Okay, I knew there were a bunch. But still, you don't recognize it. It seems to be this strange combination of hooks and curves uh, in this almost fiendish kind of, uh, kind of symbol. And after a few seconds, it glows a little bit yellow and then seems to vanish as well. Now it's invisible. Okay. Or at least not what um, I've seen. Uh, as I'm looking at it, I would like to try to commit to it to memory as much as I can so I can try to show Silas. Okay. Um, let's call this a intelligence saving throw because it's very, very quickly vanishing. That is a natural 20. No problem. You will recognize this symbol and even be able to draw it. Nice. So write Perfect. down symbol number one. Symbol number one memorized. Right. Okay. And I'm going to like try to find a napkin or something to wipe my hand. And I don't need to eat it out the door. It's true. Um, symbol number one implies the existence of symbol number two and plus. 
Um, the meanest thing and... a GM can ever do is do something like number something because that is immediately the thought. <laughs> I should have called it like symbol number four though because that would be really... <laughs> And now we're looking for one, two, and three. Um, <laughs> I'm going to just to test, uh, take the piece of cake that I put my hand in mm -hmm. and take it towards the table just to see if it changes at all. Okay. Um, you, you notice, first of all, that the, the bit of cake that you had didn't have a fuzzy patch on top of it. And in fact, nothing on the table seems to be rotten or writhing with uh, grubs or anything. That all seems to be restored. Okay. Make an arcana check. Ocean is going to be so disappointed. It's true. Well, he got his fill. Everybody else gets to enjoy it now. What was it, Arcana? Yeah. I'm not good at those. So yeah, there was an off chance that you've heard some of the insane ravings, ravings between... Uh... 14. 14? Um, good roll. <laughs> Go roll, save everything. The, the fact that it had that symbol that lingered afterwards suggests to you that magic was released but being held there for a while. And the fact that it was being held there probably had the side effect of, of maybe of creating all the other weird corruptive effects above. That's about as close as you can get with a 14, but it feels like that's not only related, but um, it was the, the containment of that much energy was the problem. Hmm. And I'll let you ponder that as we go back upstairs. Several moments have gone by now, and the the effect of the bomb is not immediate, but you can see that as wherever you've touched it with the skin, it is starting to soften and grow a little bit more uh, flesh-colored. Um, but the... the uh, slowly, Jordy is starting to revive a little bit, uh, it started with his eyes being even more uh, uh, eager, but also at the same time, um, uh, the pure fright that you saw in his eyes before has uh, has alleviated um, in that he's no longer terrified of the prospect of turning to stone immediately. Um, that said, um, you do hear footsteps coming down the hallway. And he's mm. just sort of sort of coming back to himself at this point. So is he still partly petrified, or is he just finished becoming unpetrified? You, you've you've applied all of the goop, and now it is it is it is slowly coming to effect. Probably within a minute, he'll be back to normal. Yeah, I, um, but he's still part at least partly petrified. Yeah, he's he's moving a little bit, and his voice isn't coming very clearly. Maybe the sensitive muscles around his voice box are kind of some of the last ones, or maybe because they're not visible, it's hard to tell. But he is de it's definitely working. Okay. Uh, well, if I hear footsteps, then I'm going to just, like, in front of his face, go, shh, and then hide uh, behind where the door opens up. So I would be behind the door when it opens. Okay. Um, and who comes I, in if which, does. which side are you going to try to do that for the same one that Jordy's on or the opposite it's uh sorry Whatever. Uh, I, I didn't mention there are double doors basically leading into the deeper end of the uh, okay um the one over opposite corner from Jordy so if someone comes in and sees Jordy they'll turn their back to me so I can make that a little more clear um Anyway, uh, okay, so the, the opposite side, gotcha. All right, um, the uh, footsteps uh, come a little bit closer and stop in front of the doors, and hmm. You see one door being tried. Actually, it would be the, the one on the right-hand side from the perspective of this map. Uh, and it still seems to be locked. 
the one on the left hand side uh, appears like it was not locked uh, that might have been the way he came in himself and through the door very tentatively um, looking around uh, you see sable walk in the moment she sees Jordy, she moves over to him. Are you all right? And bends down over him. Say, uh, Jordy's eyes, uh, his, his body is so, sort of slowly being able to, to move more constantly. And he tries that sort of nod over in your direction, but it's a very slow motion nod, kind of more like a wave. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Silas will do the cool thing and like step over closing the door. Uh, so he's right behind her and says... Uh, I didn't know you knew Jordy. And she spins in place, and you don't know where she got it from, but she's holding a dagger out towards you, looking very surprised. Um, uh, Silas is wearing a servant's uniform, but he's actually got his face currently. Uh, he That was one, the one thing that he didn't change uh, last time. He changed to a servant's uniform. Um, hello, Sable. And she looks up at you in this very dark room, directly at your face seeing it clearly what, or should i say diamond what are you doing here he being unexpected apparently found me jordy says trap i saved him from a trap i did not trap him yes and Sable looks back and forth between the two of you. Oh, thank you then. And she kind of puts the dagger away. And you can see that there's there's sort of a sheath on the on uh, one side of her leg, which is very well hidden inside of her dress. Um, I'll be... It's a fashion statement. It's a fashion statement. It's what everybody's doing these days. Every self-respecting uh, noble rogue thief mastermind is doing it. Um, Alice has one. He's not sure how he's going to draw it under the pants, but <laughs> just wait a minute. I got to take my pants off, and then we'll be fine. Um, she kind of straightens herself up. Um, Jordy now by this point is sort of rolling over a little bit. His muscles. It's one of those things. Like you've been, you've probably fallen asleep on a limb or two before, and you know that stage between it's cold and you think it's no longer exists. And just before pins and needles, where it's kind of pliable and yet not really uh, your limb yet, that's kind of where he's in for his entire body as he's sort of slowly rolling himself and trying to push himself to a standing position. Uh, it's, Silas will help him up onto the seat better. Yeah, it's it's very awkward, and he, he, uh, he leans into the help. Thanks. Also, Silas remembers something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because he has druid craft at the uh, higher level, uh, he reaches over and touches Jordy and takes his, takes the scent away. Oh, okay. That's one of the upgrade things that was in the uh, upgrading cantrips. I was going to say that that's new. Yep. <laughs> he hasn't used Druidcraft much, but since he hit uh, uh, level five with it. Uh, and almost, almost I'm assuming you took the dart out of his hand when you uh, put the, well, actually, no, you couldn't have because it was paralyzed now, with him. Once, yeah, once it was not stone, then yeah, he could. Yeah. But, uh, damn trap. Good one, too. I didn't know there were any traps in here. Okay. And why did you hire Jordy to come steal a book? And Silas picks up the book. Um, what languages does Silas know? Well, Silas only knows a few, but if it's not common, draconic, or abyssal, then he has a spell he can cast to help him. Uh, actually, as you pick up the book, the first thing you notice is that the, the cover is kind of wet, almost slimy, and feels organic, like uh, like plant matter, raw plant matter. Um, there's no symbol on the outside, uh, and it does kind of feel like the whole thing is 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 weirdly soggy. Um, and if you if if you open it up a little bit, mm -hmm. and kind of flip a page, you do recognize the language. It is in abyssal. It seems to be a very complicated tome, about twenty thirty pages long. Um, 
and and written entirely in this scrabbing hand of abyssal, and it sort of twists on the page. Uh, don't look at it, warns Sable. You found it then? Yeah. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> what do the first few sentences say? I mean, if he flips it open, he'd start reading a bit. Uh, how would they phrase that? Hmm, that's a really good question. Or uh, just an idea of what it says. Um, make an arcana check. Uh, I'm just going to find the right version of the right window that's open. Okay. Okay, nah. Uh, 16. Okay. Um, the first few pages, the first few lines, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a circumstance setting, um, noting that there are requirements, noting that there will be a sacrifice to be made, noting that the placement of, of key elements is extraordinarily important. Pay attention to those in a lot less fluid English type language, but more in abyssal. What you mm -hmm. determine is this is some kind of ritual. The entire book is one ritual. Uh, its purpose seems to be protective, but beyond that, it'll take time. To, you'll have to take time to study it. He's going to hold on to that book. Is it is actually? This what you, uh, Sable's reaching for it. I'll take that now. Thank you. He's not giving it to her. He's. She grabs but the book he, and tries uh, to pull it, or tries to pull the book out away from you. It's probably he tries not going to keep it behind him. It's probably not going to work, but uh, he will, or she will try. So I'll make a grab attack at the book. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, this would be straight up athletics, unfortunately, for her. Uh, Oh, wow. Better than I expected. Um, so what's your defense? What should be uh, athletics? Uh, okay, so th this is a grapple? Straight up grapple. Grapple, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then like a grapple for people, acrobatics doesn't really count because it's not about bouncing around. It's about pulling back on the book. I'm trying to keep it out of her hand in the first place. Yeah. Well, she got a firm hold of the book, and it's slimy enough that it kind of slips through your fingers. She does look a little disgusted at holding it because it is it feels slimy. It doesn't leave much for residue, a little dampness. That's mine, and I, I need it. Command, drop it. Oof, okay. Escalation. What is Command's uh, saving throw? Uh, I oh, Let's see. That's under items. Uh, I believe it's wisdom, but let me find where I put that particular PDF. Huh. It would seem that all of my Beyond 20 is not working. So we'll see how all these manual uh, rules coming out. Uh, command. Yeah, wisdom save. Uh, and uh, his spell save DC is fifteen. Okay, we'll see here what this how this goes. Uh, wisdom save. Yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> Natural one, <laughs> and that's our total hey. as well. So yeah, she looks up at you with kind of anger, and then still not changing her expression. Her hand just goes open, and she drops the book and looks down at it kind of amazed, as in, what just happened here? Silas stands forward and uh, just will drop the uh, the disguised self currently, uh, revealing the staff uh, that he's holding out in front of him and said, No. I'm here to stop whatever's going on. If you're involved with a sacrifice, you need to stop. If you're here to stop what your parents are doing, then we may join up. But this book is not for you. 
Um, He'll try to use the staff to like pull the book back. <laughs> I kind of, there's a part of me wants to make the role just in case it's that sort of like, but I won't bother mm-hmm. with that because it's just too mean. Um, yeah, and, and she's kind of shocked as well anyway at the moment. Uh, Jordy is not in a position where he can move fast enough to do anything about it, so you do drag the book back. Uh, although Jordy is the one that speaks first, as Sable seems to be still a little bit shocked and, and angry. Um, not her. With ritual. Evidence. It's evidence. We don't have to tell him everything. <laughs> uh, command. Spill. <laughs> Actually, that won't work in this case because that's not a simple action. Um, well, it, she would for six seconds, but that would be about it. Um, yeah, no, but it, it's, not, uh, it's not mind control. It's it's uh, physical control. Well, no, it's mind control for six seconds. Uh, I tell them that something that they have to do, uh, but there's no real way he can, in one word, say, get her to specifically talk about that. Uh, he could just say talk, and then she'd have to talk. But, um, hmm. I mean, she did really badly at it before. You can certainly try. Uh, no, he doesn't have a quick one word for that. Uh, he said, I'm, if your parents are up to something evil, I'm here to stop it. And he'll reach down to, to get the book again and say, work with me not against me she looks back and forth between uh you and jordy um jordy uh, kind of looks at you and and he spent a little bit of time with you not a lot but a little bit of time out of the camp um and he remembers that i'm not the one that burned the forests down <laughs> yeah that's medrick um i'm just friends with them <laughs> just friends of the pyromaniac that's all was it on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> that makes it better. <laughs> I only accidentally tried to burn down your force. Um, Jordy kind of gives a little a little nod, and, and again, it's still in that physically slowed down uh, state. Um, and Sable kind of looks a, 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 a little surprised at that. I don't know what they're doing. I'm trying to figure that out. That shouldn't have been here. That wasn't what I expected to find, actually. What is this? I don't know. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. But I assume it's something to do with magic. It is. It's in a... It's in a language used by creatures of... Creatures not from this realm... I am convinced that your whatever has happened with your parents, they are doing something tonight that needs to be stopped. I'm not so sure about that. They're having the party. It was the perfect time to go looking because they're not up here. They're always up here. It's about there at that are, time that you hear some some uh, heavy footsteps that can be heard from the stairwell you know to be behind the bookcase. Where Silas came from. That's right. Okay. Is there a safe place we can speak? And Sable kind of looks around quite surprised uh, at that, uh, at the, the footsteps. Normally, this would be a relatively safe place, but I have to check my notes to make sure I remember which room that is. Uh... Yes, that's the one. Um, follow me. 
and she kind of grabs uh, Jordy's arm to pull him along. He's he's still slowed down, but not uh, yeah. but able to move Silas on his own. Silas will gra- uh, uh, hoist him up uh, on the other side uh, uh, and redo uh, the servant's uh, appearance, okay. except with a new face, because uh, the other two are busted. Um, so yeah, he'll look like an older servant. Okay. Um, she peeks out the door first before going out um, and then leads you uh, down the hallway and over to a familiar room as she unlocks the door to guest room four. Um, and just as a reminder, guest room four is a well-appointed room decked out in a seafarer's decor, currently empty. Uh, in, yes. Uh, blue, I believe, and white and a, a uh, model of a ship in a bottle on the side. That's one of the few features in the room. I think that's where I came in. Uh, I think it is, yes. Uh, And she kind of leads you in there. No one's in here for now, so we shouldn't be disturbed. She locks the door behind. Uh, Jordy is is sort of stretching now, and you can see his his color's fully returned, and his his mobility is mostly there. I'm really sorry about this, Sable. I shouldn't have been caught like that. It was a rookie mistake. It's okay. Uh, Silas is going to uh, uh, set down his backpack uh, and bring out the healer's kit, uh, grab some bandages and bandage up his hand. I'm afraid I don't have t- I, I don't have the energy to heal this right now, but you'll need to have that looked at, I imagine. It'll be fine soon enough. It's the embarrassment that I can't live with. Uh, I really do need that book. That's the evidence I need to show to some others who can help me figure out what's going on. My mother's illness changed her. Changed my father as well. He seems normal now, which is even more confusing. If a little more nervous... I th- I think I have some idea of what has happened to your mother. Although I'm not I'm not certain. I think that there's a hag involved. She doesn't look surprised at that answer. In fact, she kind of nods her head and crosses her arms. That's what I suspected. Is your mother the hag? That she looks surprised at. I mean, we don't always get along, but I don't think that she's a hag. Don't they always look really awful and ugly and and Except terrible? when clothes be- Except when clothed in the skins of a beautiful young woman, as they're sometimes, they sometimes do. Well, she seems mostly herself, so I don't think, I mean, would she always have been a hag? Is that how that works? Because she wasn't a hag once. She was really nice once. Until she got sick. What do you know what made her sick or did it just start one day? It just seemed to start. I know that father was out patrolling, trying to learn more about the land. There's some places that we don't really go. We haven't, not for a long time, not since before I was born. Small little towns have popped up here and there. And so he wanted to make sure that They all felt like they were part of the barony. The actual borders don't really extend much further than Elfwater itself. So he was out there. Not long after that, he came back very angry. Not long after that, mother felt ill. Hmm. And your mother felt, felt ill first? First. First compared to what? 
before your father. Well, my father's never been ill. Just acting odd. He... If he wasn't ill, he at the very least seemed weary and... And she kind of turns... Inside his own head? She turns away from you. My father deserves whatever he gets. And uh, hmm. Jordy kind of puts her, puts his hand on her shoulder. Easy. It's true. Her father isn't exactly what everybody thinks he is. Not what I thought he was either. Yeah. Uh, Mark, uh, the map is still in the library. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Just trying to watching. Yep. Um, didn't want to like interrupt the moment, but nope. also notice mm. that. <laughs> nope, that's yeah. the danger of having everything I have. So yes. So you believe your father is responsible for your mother's illness and her change? Um. I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to think of how they would respond. Um, Jordy kind of just nods, uh, a quiet affirmation. Uh, Sable says, I don't think, I don't think he would have done it intentionally, but I don't know anymore. When I arrived tonight, I could see fog and movement in the woods outside and the plants in the area dying. There's a brief and look that's shared between Sable. She looks over her shoulder to Jordy. And a, a smell of, of bog or swamp in the mansion. What do you know of, of that? There's a silent conversation happening between Sable and Jordy, trying to figure out what they should say. Um, finally, Jordy says, The fog I can account for. The smell I can't. The fog is cover but I don't know what caused the smell that shouldn't happen it's none of our doing so are you working with the diamond as well or is that only sable I work where I'm needed like a logging camp on occasion Have you been hired for this job or is this a duty? You've got a reputation and I've seen you a little bit, but I don't think you deserve the answers you're asking for. This is a private affair. I think this is more than just a private affair. This is This is a night of twin moons. It's the kind of, it's the kind of time that if something was to travel from some world into this one, this would be the best time to do it. I read very little of this book, but it almost immediately mentions a sacrifice. I will not let those people below be sacrificed for something that her parents may be involved with. What else does that book tell you? 
as Sable kind of turns around, a little bit interested, but still defiant. He'll open it up and skim the first page. Okay. Just like a quick... Blah, 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 blah. Okay, wisdom saving throw. Okay. Is that magic? You can it have is, this. It is magic. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. 15. Um, the, the, the symbols kind of swim before your eyes, and you realize there's some protective uh, elements of this. It was created for particular people to see, and you're not one of those particular people. But you kind of hold on to your, your will long enough to allow you to resolve the symbols uh, a bit more. Um, it is a, a ritual, and it does describe this ritual taking days to perform. It is not a quick ritual. Um, and it is also not a small ritual. Um, they talk about um, the, there are uh, crucial placements of keystones that must be placed. Um, they have to be kept within a mile and a half of each other. But a mile and a half is still a large, large area. Yeah. So there's, there's some notion of, of this is meant to cover a large area. Um, it looks as though um, the first part is all about determining the lay of the land and trying to understand what the different components of the land, will, how they will contribute or take away from the spell. Uh, how they will cause uh, breaches or how they will reinforce the spell. And the spell seems to be of an area of effect, a very large area within these, these uh, cornerstones. Uh, but that's about all you get from a quick scan, scan of the first page. Is there anything about what kind of spell it is? I think you said some sort of protection earlier like is it a does it seem to be a barrier spell or a spell to bring stuff in i think for that an arcana check would be would be uh okay. appropriate um as you're kind of trying to 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 suss out this, this weird thing okay uh, it definitely appears to be a protective spell a barrier of some kind to be erected to prevent um a, the the uh, the crossing over between different planes, and also possibly physical, but it's it's unclear from this point of view how that part's supposed to work. Okay, he'll uh, he'll close the book and kind of press on his like pinch his nose a bit um, and say, ah, "I see what you mean." Uh, what does it say? Well, this book is meant to only be read by certain people, and I'm not one of them. But I am capable of reading it with an exertion of will. It appears to be a spell for protecting a place from entry, possibly from other realms, possibly physically. Now, it, it takes days to perform and requires a certain number of keystones placed in certain spots. Have you seen any evidence of this being done? It and, could be in quite a large area. And again, there's sort of a shared look of confusion this time between the two of them. I didn't even know anything about it until you mentioned it. We wanted to know more. We knew there was a book, an unusual book. We were able to track the shipping coming in from one of the caravans delivered to the to barony, to, to the mansion, but we didn't know what was in it. It was pretty obvious that it was that book. I mean, there are a lot of weird books in there. I had a chance to look at a few, but this one was actually behind some other spaces. Some effort had been made to hide it. Should have known there was also an effort to trap it too and protect it. Damn it. But we didn't know exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the only thing we were looking for. And Jordy kind of shakes his head no. Damn. What else were you looking for? I may have seen it. And uh, again, there's sort of a look that passes between the two of them. Sable kind of sighs. Uh... It's a sort of medallion. 
it looks like a coin that's been that's been sharpened on one side. It's something of my father's, I think. If it's here. Why is this why is that evidence? I can't tell you everything. I don't even know if I should have told you this much. For all I know, you're working for him. For all I know, this is all just... For who? For my father. Or for somebody else. We work to save the town. So does he. He says it all the time. So does she, for that matter. So what do we. What have they actually done? Where were they when the town was attacked? They were still ill. I'm trying to help the town. If the Baron and Baroness are innocent, I'm trying to help them. If they're guilty, I'm trying to stop them. Make a perception check. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Nope. Oh yeah, no, that's that's terrible. Um and excuse me, because I gotta grab something from another map that I wasn't thinking it was gonna be on this map. Because that's the way that my plans go. Uh here we go. As you feel behind you the sort of swirling of air and coalescing behind you stands a tall figure of shadow. It sort of manifests and swirls in. Oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. It says ghost man. That was not the one I meant to grab. <laughs> I'm grabbing them blindly from a different layer, which is transparent. And it was like, eh. So that's not actually the one that's supposed to be there. Imagine just a swirling ghost. Mm. You know what? I probably could have just grabbed it from the... Uh, uh... Yeah. There it is. Is it a okay. ghost or a, sh like, or a shadowy figure? Okay, sorry. I will, I, this is the one that I meant to have there. I'll just drag it from here. There. Uh, it appears to be a nebulous, nebulous sh vaguely humanoid, shadowy figure standing nearly eight feet tall. Um. It seems to be holding a very large uh, warhammer of some kind, ready to strike. Um, Jordy from behind you says, "Wait!" And it has. Well, it's like the anti medric Yeah, <laughs> the anti medric Sure. Jordy asks it to wait, and it pauses. It's here for the book. It's a little less um, persuadable than we are. If you hand over the book, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, Silas will turn around to face it uh, and say, Who are you? And what need have you for the book? Um, make a charisma saving throw. Actually, I probably should verify that, but I'm going to go with it for now. Is it magic? Uh, technically, yeah. Then 27 with a natural 20. Wow. Okay. Doesn't really matter what the role was with that. Um, yes, it was a wisdom check. Okay. Um, you feel a wave of magical energy pass over you. And you can feel before your will kicking in, before your 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 mind kicking in, you feel the 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 waves of uncertainty, the waves of um, of disruption meant to cause fear in mortals. It was very, very powerful, uh, and yet you you were able to find yourself a center uh, and let it crash over you. Um, it's still and actually we'll take a swing a swing at you now. Okay. Um, shoot, where'd you go? Oh, did I not open that one up? 
Well, it was the one the one that I didn't open up. How's that for timing? All right. Um, so taking a swing with this big warhammer. Hmm. Apologies. All right. All for want of a number. Okay, it's loading. <laughs> Please wait. Loading. Uh, okay. Does a 12 hit? No. Okay. Uh, it goes wide and actually smashes into the bottle containing the ship, which goes scattering across the room. It does make a fair amount of noise when it does so. Uh, but it seems intent. Um, how would you like to respond? Uh, Sable is on the other side, kind of stepping back a little bit. Uh, Jordy is as well. Wait, please, just give it the book. Uh, Silas will look at it and then not until I find out what it intends to do with the book. Uh, and yeah, well, it's worth a try. Uh, he'll expend another charge from the staff to command flee. Okay. And that was, uh, which saving? Wisdom 15. Wisdom 15. 15. <laughs> uh, that's really funny. 16. You can see it, see it waver for a moment uh, and then uh, redoubles its effort and will actually strike or try to strike again. Uh, 19 probably hits this time. Uh, yep, yeah, Silas will cast shield so it does not hit. Okay. So the massive shadowy warhammer comes crashing down and kind of impacts with this blue arc that covers over you for a moment. Uh, and then it seems very angry about this. Uh, well. This is how Silas dies and none of us know about it. No. Mm. I mean, Sable and Jordy can witness. They'll never tell you. <laughs> I don't know. Sable might tell Annie. That's true. Sable they seem slightly. They seem slightly, you know, implicated in the killing of Cy the, the possible killing of Silas. Mm. Yes, yeah, I like how you already framed it as the future killing of Cyrus. <laughs> Silas. Mm. Like, like, <laughs> Do I have time to AFK to about two minutes? <gasps> Sorry, what? Do I have time to AFK about two minutes? I really gotta. Go. I, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't turn your camera BRB. off if you can. Okay, I won't. Um. Okay, Silas is going to cast protection from evil and good from the staff. Hmm, okay. Uh, they'll just give it disadvantage on any of its uh, things. Um, and he'll move back to where Sable and Jordy are and say, what is this and where is it from? Give me a good reason to give it the book, and I may do so. Okay. Who are you working for? As you step back, it will take a swing at you. Mm-hmm. It does not seem to be hampered. Uh, 24, does that hit with the shield? Uh, well, no, the shield's gone now. Uh, uh, yeah, shield will be gone. Uh, so it's not... Undead, demon, devil, aberration, or fairy? It does not seem to be hampered by your magic, no. Okay. No, nope, that hits. Uh, so many windows. Um, mm -mm -mm. Whoops, that's not even possible. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of neat, but not possible. 
You heal three. No, uh, you take six points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. As the the uh, hammer comes in contact with you, um, it kind of causes you to say "oof" as you uh, also raise your other uh, your other answers. Um, please, I don't have time to explain. Just give her the book. Like an insight check on sure. Sable. What are you trying to determine? If she seems to be working for the benefit of things or the benefit of herself. Hmm. The general okay. good or is she being selfish? Okay. That's one of those asking the universe to determine things that really can't be told from the scene, but I'll let you make the insight check and we'll interpret it somehow. Well, does she like, just is she doing something selfish or not? Um, hmm. Okay. Fourteen. Probably not great. Yeah, fourteen. All right. Um, hmm. Again, that's kind of trying to mind read with an insight check. Um, in this instance, um, that little slip up when she called it her was more familiar than it probably should have been in this instance. Um, it is not fear which is driving her at this moment. Not her, not fear for herself. She is kind of afraid for you, uh, and she's definitely motivated to, to, to get the book to this, this thing. Hmm. Well, uh... Um, also make a perception check with disadvantage because you're kind of busy with something else but you might notice something offhand holy moly wow when the lowest of two is 22 yeah you notice um, uh, sort of glittering in the wreckage of the ship and the bottle uh, you notice uh, a uh, leather a thong, which is attached to a what looks like a metallic coin. It hmm. seems to be oddly shaped at one side. Okay. Uh, the creature. Well, the creature advances. Yep. Uh, so, where is the ship in that room? Where the eyeball is, for convenience. Okay. Uh, well, Silas will walk over with his big, heavy hiking boots and stand on the coin and present the book here. And there's a moment's kind of confusion uh, as a shadowy hand comes off of, again, the figure is very indistinct, uh, mostly like a form of shadow and, and smoke, um, but you do kind of get the impression of a hand coming out and reaching for the book and then grabbing onto it. And Silas will cross his arms and look at the creature in kind of a, well, what's next way. So do you give up the book or do you just hold, hold yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, he gives him the book. Um, yeah, the book. That kind of disappears into the form of the shadow. And then the shadow kind of looks over to uh, Sable and Jordy and vanishes out through the window. This time, quite literally flowing through the window, but flowing through it as if it is nothing more than smoke. There's a small crack, uh, cr uh, crack in which it uh, flies out of. And then Sable kind of lets out a, a sigh of relief. Oh, that was frightening. Who is she? Um, an associate, I guess. For the people I've been working with. Say, well, you don't have to tell him anything more. Maybe I do. I don't even know where to start, though. And for Why that, we will this? pause and go to hey. another person here as we've had a bit of action. And uh, let's go. I was looking forward to the info dump. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs>
we might not get to the info dump today because we, we've we've got a bit more to do and and uh, and frankly, uh, it's already five o'clock. Surprisingly enough, uh, I didn't ask if anybody oh, had a particular hard out, but uh, we'll probably nope. not go beyond six. I think today at, at the very latest, we shall see where things end up. Well, a soft I have out the is making of bubble tea to get back to. <laughs> Hey, they're important. I have a soft and... out of seven PM because that's when the superstore closes, and I'm, I want to get more wine. Right, that's well, <laughs> drunken acts being drunk. Um, acts. <laughs> at this point, um, with the time that it took for for uh, to for Annie and Celia to search that room and then kind of deal with the aftermath of that weird whatever it was, uh, we'll say that in the meantime, the meeting has now essentially adjourned. Uh, the Baron himself goes over to the door, pulls out a key from a pocket and unlocks it. Um, since we haven't heard into things since uh, recently, I suspect that whatever vermin was running around has been dealt with by now. I can assure you it was nothing more than a minor problem. There has been a thief who's been plaguing me recently, and it was probably just a false alarm. I was going to say, that must be like uh, some big and nasty vermin. <laughs> big, yes. Sometimes nasty, not particularly, just annoying. And well, so, hopefully everything proceeds uh, nicely going forward. It was nice to meet all of you. Best put your masks back on or my wife will be angry. And he proceeds to put his own back on and we'll just have everybody... Kind of effectively, whoops, I grabbed somebody by accident here. And I'll just light back up the tips of the wings on the mask. Because, yeah, there is like a flame. I don't know if you guys saw from the picture last time. but And just for ease, I'm just moving everybody back into the hallway, but they'll disperse from there. Copy-paste. <laughs> Off into the four directions. I won't, I won't bother moving everybody. You can move yourselves if you want to. Just imagine that they're milling about and moving in different directions. Some of them head into the uh, uh, into the eating area because no I'll go one find Melora. No one has actually told the two of them that uh, there was anything wrong with the food. And by the time they get there, there's nothing wrong with the food. Uh, you find Melora kind of uh, talking uh, angrily with her dad, Ardwin Cartwright, who's right there, uh, and kind of talking in, in a mixture of of hushed tones and uh, and frustrated uh, uh, voices, although Ardwin is mostly uh, kind of calm and, and looks like he's trying to reassure and qu calm and quiet his angry daughter. Um, there's a every once in a while he glances around at other people who are taking notice and and uh, and looking and kind of trying to uh, uh, keep her voice down. You hear that phrase more than once. Keep your voice down. I don't want to be embarrassed uh, as much <laughs> as anything else. Uh, but the rest of them. And I will say that most of them are actually sort of milling around in the uh, in the ballroom. Um, Verandell, actually, Verandell catches up with Dudex. So they're having a conversation of some kind. Okay. Uh, and she'll be over there now. And oops, that one will be over here now. Just generally moving a bunch of people around. And I will say that while you see her on the map, Sable is not on this map. Melora, sorry that took so long. Uh, I'm glad the uh, big bad vermin didn't get you guys. Uh, and Melora I'll looks at that. you with, with, all the, with a chuckle. all the fury that she's had towards her dad for the moment, kind of that, that laser beam focuses on you for a second, but then her, her face uh, uh, softens. Oh, good. You're alive. I was wondering oh, for yeah. a moment. No, apparently something was happening and the Baron brought us all to a room and we just, you know, had a little meeting, introduced ourselves and nothing bad happened. I got to get to know the Baron a little better, a few of the other people who were there also. So how's the party? And actually, I should say, before we completely leave uh, Silas behind, you do hear heavy footsteps of guards who are moving around upstairs. They don't seem to be coming in this room as if they're not checking that one. It's more that they're passing by, probably piling into that room you were in before. Um, well, the food was bad, and then it wasn't. Like the drinks? Yeah, uh, the rest of the food was also going the same way, but Annie and I discovered this bag thing, magic bag thing. It was terrible. Um, it might have been oh, causing it. Magic bag what? Uh, underneath the table, there was a, 
Oh, sorry. I have to back up because that was not uh, that was not Melora who was there. That was Celia. Okay. <laughs> Brain. I was gonna say. Too many people. So yeah. Uh, no, the food was all going bad. Anyone to talk to the kitchen about it? I ran into my father. And I'm telling her that none of the food was bad in here. It tasted fine. Maybe it was a bad batch. Yes? I'll ask him if he had one of the drinks. And he points to a, a, a small sideboard in here where there are additional drinks that have been been poured and some more food. Uh, not the crumb food, so it's not uh, stuff that's going to leave a, a you know leave crumbs everywhere, yeah. uh, but kind of the other kinds of finger food, and plus the drinks. And he's holding one in his hands. Tastes just fine. And he takes a swig. Oh, pretty so pretty it expensive. Was just a bad batch. It wasn't just we a bad batch. We could always check the kitchen out. I think Annie's on it. How was your meeting? Yes, you had a private meeting with the Baron. That's... That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise meeting. Uh, he said that. Uh, what, what, where is the Baron right now? I just don't want to. Uh, the Baron, move on Baron's going years. over to talk to. He's in the room, but he's on the other side talking to his wife and to the. Okay. Because uh, I just want to make sure, like, he doesn't hear my comments. <laughs> you can lower your voice. There's enough people yeah. in here talking and chatting. Uh, I'll figure the Squid Lady will talk to to Wish. Poor Wish. Uh, oh. <laughs> we'll, but we'll leave. Uh, Leave Odiga in behind. Odiga will will seek anybody else out. Uh, Odiga and Maximus will talk for a while. I have all these imagined conversations in my head. I'm afraid. Sorry about that. This is this is a, a much a I bet you of like my... at least fifty percent of them are super awkward. <laughs> I, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's me. Uh, it, it's it's one of those ones where I'm also imagining the imagine the the mingling of these forty people. So it's not just the three of you. It's that's what's the outcome of the mingling of forty people. Oh boy. All right. Sorry, but yes, you can oh. you can lower your voice. Uh, Athanos isn't too far away, but he seems to be chatting with somebody else. I didn't mean yeah. to put him quite that close. Um, he's My brain someone... is forgetting. Who is Athanos again? Uh, Athanos and Odiga are from the clan. Okay, perfect. That's the other name that. It... Yeah, Odiga. Are they Silas's parents or? Uh, no, no, but okay. they. Odiga is. Ardwin. Oh, Cart Cartwright. Yeah. Never Ardwin yeah. Cartwright yeah. is the is the the trader you were talking to before, the one who had hired you for the wagon. Melora's dad. Um, I think probably, uh, well, I, I don't want to put words in Silas's mouth. What would Silas have described Odiga and Athanos? Because I don't know if they've ever directly met them, but they, you would have described them probably. Mm. And there's aunt and uncle. Okay. Okay. They're very severe looking people. Yeah. And they, okay. yeah, they're tacky looking people. And they're here, which does suggest they have a certain prominence somehow. Maybe because nobody get a hold of Silas to give him the message. Brain was meaning. My brain was thinking of Ardwin because I meant to ask. I see a name, not an like, not a costume. Right. But I'm blanking on who that person is. And I don't have so. an, I don't have an icon for Ardwin, unfortunately. I meant to. If you hover over, it says "small jewels," which is the mask he's wearing. Um, okay. But yeah. But yeah, no, I was it's just like, wait, name? I forget. Yeah. If, if you feel overwhelmed, it's twice as worse for me, and I apologize. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's an experiment. Um, so, yes, um, uh, Ardwin's asking you about your meeting with the Baron. You don't have to go through line by line again unless you want to, but... Uh, I'll just give, like, the general lines, and uh, I tell him about the story of the uh, Titan in pieces and what I think it means. I could be wrong. I, I don't think I am, but... Yeah. Do you suppose we might find a piece or two of our own? That might be very interesting. I could imagine that it something like that would be very valuable. It's like who assembles the Titan first gets to win, I guess. Or at least prevent the other person from assembling it. But it seems like whoever is after the pieces is has a way of locating them. Anyway, yes. uh, the, the, the Baron said the reason we were all in that room was because so something was going on in the palace or in the mansion, and... He said it was just vermin, but I think that was a lie. But... <laughs> but yeah, there seems to be something going on. We just don't know what yet. There was a hullabaloo. We saw some of the guards moving around, but nothing seemed to happen down here, as far as I could see. That's good. Except for the whole thing with the food. Or the bad batch of drinks. 
Yes, it's always a shame when good food goes to waste, or when good food is bad food, I suppose, as well. Although Ocean didn't seem to mind. Oh, yeah, it's like uh, Ocean hired the catering company. <laughs> I had a good chat with him earlier, too. His... Wait, you, you were there, weren't you? Yeah. Thanks for remembering. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I remembered a thing. <laughs> Uh, Melora can be bitter. It's fine. Um, so your meeting was just a meeting then? Yep. I mean, not just a meeting. He spoke with the Baron. The Baron spoke with him. The Baron even knew him by name, I'm sure. Yeah, I uh, tried to get some insight uh, on uh, how him and the Baroness got better, because they, they were quite ill a few months ago. But uh, the answers were a bit elusive. Something about a curse. And a heavy price to pay. And I'm keeping my voice low for that. Sounds terribly embarrassing. I can imagine that'd be one reason we keep it quiet. Maybe it was some sort of extramarital affair. Dad! I mean, it happens to people in power. People are attracted to wealthy people and people of stature. Dad! Speaking of which, where's my date? And Arbun kind of wanders off. Because, yeah, his date is not here. Uh oh. But he kind of leaves the two of you alone to, to, to chat as he leaves the room. All right. Anyway, I offered my services to the Baron if he ever gets cursed again. Hopefully not, but if he does, I'll. Can, I can probably lift a curse. You think so? That would be a pretty amazing ability. It would be. And it would, words, damn it. It, it. Like what he's trying to say, it's like, if Medrick could do this favor for the Baron, if he ever gets dressed again, it'll put the Temple of Ignis like in a higher standing in his eyes, kind of. Definitely. And then you see the, the, the Baron and the Baroness uh, having chatted for a little while with the, the, uh, the Chamberlain. Mm hmm. And the Baroness steps to the center of the room and sort of claps for attention. The music goes quiet for the second. It's been playing a little bit mildly in the background, kind of that same, you know, it's it's kind of the 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 quiet Baroque music for you know yeah. ancient medieval parties. Um, although you're still noticing that it's slightly off every once in a while. Um, you're not sure why they hired this particular band and probably will not hire them again. <laughs> but the Baroness steps to the center of the room. If I can have your attention, please. It has been a long time since we have been fortunate enough to host such a wonderful collection of people all at our mansion. And what I would like to propose now is an old tradition that we haven't been able to, to fulfill. So please, if you can find your assembled partners or partner with someone else here, I would like to lead you all in a dance. And so... Uh, I'll look at Miller and it's like, all right, we got this. We practiced. <laughs> as, as indeed they, they start to arrange, and I'm not going to, again, grab all of these, uh, these folks here. We'll assume most people are going in. Um, I'll try to locate... Uh, where's... Uh, no, I wasn't there for that conversation. God. Where's Angus? <laughs> um, I mean, running out the door probably, but... <laughs> Yeah, Angus isn't. You haven't seen Angus for a while. Um, as uh, indeed, a couple of the pages who are standing by uh, are also kind of sent to go and scout out and find other people. So one comes to the uh, the dining room, and uh, the mistress of the house would like to announce there is a formal dance starting in just a moment. Your presence is requested. And that's the same sort of speech that's given to numerous people around the place. I will make sure that there is no longer any cake on my hands and none of it got on my dress. <laughs> um, and then I will go into the ballroom. Celia similarly kind of uh, makes a bit of a, of, a, of, a, of a thing. I hope they don't make me dance with my father. He's the one I came with. And indeed, the, there are an assembled groupings. And it is a formal dance, which means it's not as, as intimate as uh, like a two-person two dance. And in fact, partners are kind of irrelevant because once you start the, the, the maneuver, it's a back and forth, crisscrossing, all of that. 
Um, one thing that both of you will notice right away uh, is that Sable is not there. Um, the stag is not there. Let's see. Um, and it looks as though uh, Ocean is not there and um, Ardwin has not found his date. Uh, so, in fact, uh, it is a, a slightly odd number of people, but they still manage that. I'm assuming that dancing in medieval times is kind of like uh, a soccer match in that they have rules for contingencies for everything that they need to have. So no matter what group of people are there, they can still manage to do the dance. If it's an odd number of people, that's fine. And they proceed to do this. And they direct the band to, to begin the, the formal steps. Uh, of this this particular one. So, are both of you participating in the dance or are either one of you trying to get away? First of all. Varendel would practice. In it. Varendel is, is eager. He's kind of you he kind of would whisper to you and Annie that's like I was never much of a dancer, but I did kind of miss it a little bit. I haven't been at court for a long time. I I very much feel that. <laughs> And there's not a lot of choice in terms of Medric dancing or not. Um, Melora has kind of taken the, the initiative. Partially she has decreed that you are dancing. Partially we because, the, yeah, you practiced. And also the, you, you kind of get the, the, the impression that her head is on a swivel as she's kind of looking around at everybody else as well and trying to, to figure them out. So we'll make, we'll make it simple. It'll be, a, it'll be a series of three rolls, and we'll check the results after the three rolls. Um, what would you say is your most... Uh, dancing like skills, three different skills to participate in this. Uh, if you use the same skill, it'll be a disadvantage. Uh, but insight for where somebody's going to step. That's and to make one. sure I'm not stepping on their toes. Sure. Athletics for like lifting up my partner in these wonderful spins. Oh wow, you want to show off? All right. Yeah. And uh, shit, intimidation can't be used really. <laughs> I mean, if you want to clear the dance floor, if it turns into a rap battle or some sort of yeah. da dance off, um, now I've got to have that in some future game. I don't think it's going to happen now, but there will be some sort of dance off competition in which intimidation is totally an appropriate skill for that. Okay. And then, well, medicine, assuming some, assuming I drop my partner on her face, but hopefully I won't need that. Um, perception, as in not stepping on somebody's toes. Okay. So you got insight. Perception. Insight like to feel like where their movements are going or which, which like if they're zigging or zagging. Okay. What was the middle one? Perception. Perception uh, and. Was perception, athletics, and insight. Okay. Uh, difficulty will be 12. It's a complicated dance and long. So just tell me, roll the three of those and tell me how many successes. And Annie, which three do you feel that Annie would be using? Um, acrobatics would probably be one, um, okay. just because of the physicality of it. Um, history as in she knows these kind of dances well, because she has been trained by rote how to do it. And probably had been given a history lesson as in, this is what the dance means. This is what this step means. This is what, if you do this flourish, that means this sort of thing. Sure. Exactly. And this is how Annie blows her cover. <laughs> um, and performance. And performance. Okay. So same thing as for uh, Medric. Um, okay, I'll roll note, athletics first. Note which. Yeah. Note which. Uh, which role. Which success for which. For which part. So oh, athletics. Shit. Unfortunately, you're finding your feet a little hard, and they're tripping over each other. So difficulty twelve. Yeah. If you have inspiration or anything else that can that can influence this, you're certainly welcome to use that, but that's a bit strong. I have inspiration somewhere on my sheet. I forget what it's from. Also, I'm terrible at giving out inspiration, Maybe. but I will try to do that more often. Right. It says one inspiration here, so I'll roll again. If you want to. If you want to use it on that, Athletics. you're welcome to. Powerful flourish. 22. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the, the floor. I was, I, I, I was only pretending to drop her. The surface of the floor is a little bit slippery in that point, but you managed to make it part of the move. Okay. All right. So that's one success Next with athletics. Will be inside. Twenty-five. 
She's moving is, sideways, and it, it I'll is, move, I'm moving sideways with her. Well, and in part, it, because this is a group dance, it's also in part of how you work with everybody else. Right, right. But it's as though like you know where they're going to be thing. before they are there. In fact, you're kind of showing some of them up because they're kind of, there's a few of the people that are getting spun through here. Odega in particular, not really used to formal dances. <laughs> and you kind of get the impression that she's, it, there's this weird moment where you think of her as kind of like a, a fish swimming upstream. <laughs> getting buffeted about by all the heavy currents that are going on, uh, yeah. and and but you're able to 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 casually move her through the crowd. Um, and the final one, this is perception. Perception. I want to okay. see like a if I can figure out the pattern of the dance. Okay. Twelve. Oh. Oh, right on the on, really? the on the nose. So yeah, it's a complicated dance, and you're able to move through it kind of on instinct. Uh, the pattern still kind of eludes you. You you know it enough for this dance, but you couldn't predict what it's going to look like tomorrow. Okay. Um, but overall, a pretty good performance. How did Annie do? Let's see what the three roles are like of her. So, it sounds fake. <laughs> <laughs> but I got twenty five for all three. Oh wow! wow. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> nice. So remind me of what the, we'll go through the roles. Doesn't matter which one, which order now, because they're all the same. So. But we had well, acrobatics. Well, it does, because one of them was a nat 20. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So acrobatics was 25. It's a 19, then. So, or no, sorry. What, what did you roll? Uh, uh, plus 7. So, so 18, it was... 18. Uh, yeah, 18. It wasn't the nat 20, anyway. Yeah, no. So how, uh, how history. Do, how do you want to describe the acrobatic portion of, of, uh, of Annie's dancing? How does she show if everybody up? She's the most graceful person in the room right now. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. <laughs> um, probably um, to the point that people notice she does not belong here. Uh oh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Out of habit. <laughs> um, the history is the nat twenty for twenty five. Okay. So with a nat with a nat twenty involved and a twenty five, how does the historical interpretation affect? And does do you does Annie use that to say anything particular, perhaps to Varendel or perhaps to others? Um, she would do something that uh, would basically do something that would indicate that she is interested in Varendel. Okay. So leaning into it a little bit more, a little bit closer contact, a little bit more mm -hmm. eye contact and, and tilting just the right way. Okay. All right. Yep. Uh, and then performance for 25, which was a natural 19. All right. <laughs> I'm like, it sounds fake. I know. Uh, I countered your rolls with my first three rolls, which were all under 10. So. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I gave you. It's like I gave you my luck bonus. <laughs> I just started rolling them, and I'm like, I, th "This is fake." Th this is. <laughs> We've slipped into that parallel universe. Be careful of what else happens today. This is what bubble tea does for you, apparently. Apparently. Um, so, how does the performance come apart? What? How does that particular part shine? Um. Again, it would go into um, making sure that anybody that I dance with is left with an impression that they do well as well, basically. Okay. So it's the, it's the, the helping hand that they are, you're, you're elevating their dance by being there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so basically it's also like if they make a mistake, brushing it off and in, in the proper way. Right. Okay. I think as you're both moving through this dance, and, and it, it is kind of fun. It's this weird, exhilarating thing that the, the pace is surprisingly fast when you're going through this. Uh, the the pattern is, it reminds you, Medrick, a little bit of some fighting patterns you've, you've dealt yeah. with, but it's even more complicated than most of them. And you do, every once in a while, have to catch yourself maybe. It's like... You know, if I just swung a little bit harder, I could clock that guy and then I could, but wait, no, no, I'm not supposed to hurt anybody here. 
Uh, and maybe wrong having, setting, wrong setting. <laughs> have to be dragged back to the present a little bit by Melora, who might do a little, you know, ankle top uh, touch to 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 kind of remind you where you're at. But you're doing, you did pretty well. Nice. Um, and I think that as you're moving through, you, you notice um, many smiles. Like people are genuinely having fun. This is, and in, in even in, you both would notice that the Baron and Baroness, um, while they are moving through the pattern, they seem to end up with each other more often than, than than other people in the pattern. And you get the sense that they're both deliberately moving through and they catch each other's eyes from time to time. And you can just see this 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 joy that's coming through the two of them uh, and genuine big smiles from them and, and everybody else. Um, and uh, uh, at one point, moving through the dance, having not really brought, I believe, any, I don't think he brought any particular partner, uh, Oliver is making his way through. And at one point, Annie, you find yourself dancing with Oliver, who is looking at you with a sort of begrudging respect and curiosity. Uh, I'm is Oliver her relative? Oliver is Oliver Wantrose, the the uh, the uh -oh. relative, my cousin. <laughs> Um, I must oh, say, videos. I had not expected such sophistication so far from the capital cities. Even in Pitajun, where I've spent far too much time, they simply do not have the skill at moving through a dance like this as you've displayed, my dear. Tell me, who trained you? YouTube. <laughs> I will say a well-known, um, the, the name of a well-known dance instructor in Pitajun, or not in Pitajun, in the capital. Okay. I will have you make a deception roll along with that, because, of course, you, you may have very Nat well been. <laughs> Natural 19 for a 29. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Um, MVP. There, there is, there is a, a, even with the Keep mask on, nice you can forever. see the eyebrow kind of go up. Very well, very well. A very expensive trainer as well for something used at court so often. Very, very nice. I shall send my regards to them next time I am at court. And then at that point, Oliver is swept away through the dance, still feeling pretty suspicious that this, this, uh, anonymous country girl uh, this 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 uh you know low level uh, uh essentially police lieutenant somehow has a mastery of of the dance uh, but not yet quite convinced that uh either they know you and they, that they know you directly or that they have any other suspicions so it's riding that edge pretty closely uh although you do notice a number of others who have noticed just how well you've danced not least of which is Verandell who is not a slouch in his in his own right, but he dances less from training and more from um, paying attention. He doesn't. Yeah. He's not familiar with the dance directly. It's more of he's done formal dances before. He knows generally how they're supposed to go, and he does kind of mess up. He's the one you end up correcting for a couple of times as well. Not even necessarily anybody else would notice. There's a couple of people who fall over flat on their faces. Uh, and Odega is not, she never falls over, but she's just mystified by trying to move through this whole crazy thing. Um, Athanos, by the way, not dancing. Uh, maybe the fishnets have given him away, but for whatever reason, he's not there. He's managed to find himself somewhere else to hide while this is going on. Uh, even Angus gets involved, but Angus's style of dancing is more like, more like a country uh, uh, a, a folk dance. Uh, there's a lot more knees up in what Angus is doing than what most people would be doing around the table, um, even to the point of slapping knees or or uh, or giving a holler from time to time, much to the chagrin of some of the people, especially the hey. Chamberlain, the Chamberlain who's got this dour, sour look in his face and kind of dances almost uh, uh, primly throughout all of this. Every time he kind of passes by Angus or any of the people who aren't of the, quote, upper class, there is a sort of hesitation in even coming close to them. Uh, and whenever Angus lets out a, a, a howl of joy, surprising from Angus for certain, but still he's doing it because he's, he's remembering younger days potentially, uh, the Chamberlain kind of gets this sour look of, of disgust uh, for the, the commoner who's invaded his dance. And you can imagine, I'm not going to run through all 
400 of them I've created here, but uh, you can imagine each of them kind of taking it to their own way. Uh, Melora is impressed uh, by the dancing you've been able to do um, and seems to be, however, also kind of making the room and kind of checking out the other dancers and kind of seeing how they're doing. There's a couple of other young men that are here. Um, she does end up with uh, Oliver for a little while and doesn't seem entirely put off by that fact. Um, Can I hear what they're talking about? Uh, there's not much talking going on okay. during the dancing. <laughs> You're, aside from the little aside that Oliver had with Annie, most of the interactions are much shorter than that. And half of them are kind of looking to go to see where they're supposed to end up next. And whether there's... By the end of the dance, not everybody is ending up with the partner they started with because they got lost somewhere in the middle. But the two of you certainly do end up uh, with the same with the same uh, uh, starting partners. Wait, what if there's like some like metagaming thinking, but like there was some <laughs> kind of ritual and and the dance was part of the ritual? Yeah. No, but it's like <laughs> dancing is a, like this kind of like formal dance where you swap partners is a good way to spread COVID through a room. Or maybe that's just like real life me thinking. Too hard. <laughs> the danger of having having had this yeah. this hanging cloud for a couple of years. Now we start to think, wait, it's a ritual to spread COVID. Just COVID in Omasia. Are, are there <laughs> wash basins here? Can I do I have any spritz for my sanitizer? Hands? Yeah, instead, no. They just have a big common pile of sandwiches that everybody's munching down on, and uh, yeah, moldy sandwiches. Moldy sandwiches. <laughs> This is the, uh, the the old joke. Uh, I play video games so I can experience things that I, I don't get in real life, like affordable uh, housing and, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> easy life. Well, here we're dancing, COVID free in the in the medieval world. Until I ruined it, anyway. <laughs> uh, nope, nope, no COVID here. However, um, there is a shout uh, that comes from the other room. Uh, as you see, some of the people kind of milling about and coming out. Uh, there are toilets that basically run underneath the stairs, which are both a combination of actual toilet and, and just a, a place to, uh, to, to, you know, breathe for a moment, check your makeup or check your, your clothing, check your costume. And uh, uh, Maximus actually howls um, at the base of the stairs. Um, I think there's something wrong. And... Uh, Stumbling out of the washroom is Ocean. Uh, Ocean, who has a, a bluish skin normally, his skin is now patched with green and little yellow pustules. That's no good. I'm assuming you're going to go and investigate at least to yeah. see this part. Uh, and as, as the crowd I'll give him a gathers, look, and it's like, I got to go to do as, this. Well, most of the crowd would kind of move in that direction uh, and curious. And uh, he, uh, Ocean is kind of coughing as they come out. Um, and behind them, from the door, you can kind of get this this waft of something putrid and uh, um, um, kind of um, um, yeah, it kind of holds in the air a stench um, where you can see a little bit of of uh, gas still holding in the air with a, a yellowish green hue. Um, I don't know if you. So go somebody in... took an epic dump in there. In other words, well, <laughs> that would be one interpretation. As Maximus kind of kind of drags uh, Ocean out, um, who even as he passes by you, you can see the patches starting to recede. Uh, they're paler and and uh, and still visible on his skin, and the little little pustules that have been forming in some of them, uh, some of them kind of kind of uh, grow large and burst. Uh, and then kind of dissipate quickly. A, a short sort of effect is happening. Um, what do you do? I'll go inspect. And uh, so whatever is affecting him is, seems to be receding. I'll just do a medicine check. Uh, yeah, you can take a look at him. Um, Annie, are you also going to take a look at uh, this area? Medicine. Or are you staying away? Or I, I rolled a seven on a constitution check. So I'm just like gagging. Like yeah. I cannot go, go closer. Okay. So 14 for medicine. Um, is even, it like a curse or a disease? Or? Um, 14? Uh, it yeah. does resemble a, a sort of uh, disease, uh, disease outbreak, but a disease outbreak that is going by and coming and going very, very quickly, which suggests that it's not an actual disease so much as a magically in induced effect, like a momentary disease. Uh, and it makes you, it makes you think of, of, um, different magical um, effects like 
being able to splash acid on someone or splash or splash their face with poison or freeze them temporarily. All these things that happen, but then dissipate pretty quickly. Annie, as you kind of are coming around and you smell the little wafting of that, of that, and you start to gag, the worst part about it is it, it causes you to remember. And then you're also remembering the, the gigantic sploosh underneath the table and the, the gooey worms that were in there and that sort of gas that flowed up that thankfully you held your breath for. But this sort of causes it. It's like that terrible sense memory problem even every once in a while people will get where it's like, oh, it's all coming back and, oh, it's worse this time. Uh, it has the same sort of characteristic, but it's, it's, a, it's slightly different. Uh, maybe it's like, you know, rose water added uh, or, or maybe, maybe putrid rose water added. <laughs> into the scent uh, eau de toilette perhaps oh god <laughs> um um is, is he conscious can he can he talk uh yeah he's conscious he's kind of gagging a bit he's kind of spitting a little bit of, as well what happened oh i i it, it, terrible it's there was this thing attached to back the back of the the, the room I thought strange to stare a snack there, but it looked like a little bag of snacks, so I opened it. But it went all gooey in my hand and exploded. It was awful. I didn't even get a chance to taste anything, and then it starts to, what's wrong? What's wrong with me? Why am I, where are these little patches? And he kind of pokes at one of the, the little the little zits, and it kind of goes open. I'm not sure. Oh, that's um, disgusting. I'll, I'll cast Lesser Restoration on him. Okay. Uh, and he kind of holds two. still, and the, the how does the how does the magic look for uh, for oh Andy? Did you want to say something? I suddenly like I'm very glad that I succeeded that dexterity save. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's like full body is, acne. Do not want. This is this is pretty hideous stuff. Um, so what does your uh, lesser restoration look like? And uh, in particular, because remember, you still have a flame effect that occurs with yours. Yeah. Um, and I don't think less restoration triggers. No, you, you're immune to your own flame now, aren't you? Yeah. Um, okay, so that's not going to be a problem. But what does it look? So like? my hands will like, they'll warm up, and it, there's going to be like a fire look to them, but they're not actually going to burn the guy. Okay. And that fire aura will extend to the to his entire body, like spreading like gradually, and stay there for a few seconds, and then it'll dissipate along with the disease, hopefully. Okay. I, I, I think that Maximus will step back as the sort of sizzling on the surface of, of ocean skin uh, starts to settle in. And I kind of do imagine it burning away this disease as much as anything else. And then probably the fire flames sink below the surface a little bit, as it does actually also cleanse the inside as well as the outside. Uh, and then there's a little cough at the end from ocean and a little little uh, little familiar to you, a little uh, gout of, of, of whitish smoke that, that uh, extends out. Oh. Feeling better? I feel much better. It feels like I was in a, a warm undertow for a, a few minutes. It was great. That's really nice. Can you do it again sometime? He uh, seems to have forgotten. If you're sick again, that like, whatever you did, just... In fact, could you just show me what happened? But not actually re- re- replicated. And and both of you can still kind of smell the, the 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 gas a little bit, but it's it's dissipated. Yeah, I can probably do so. You'll be ready if I need to, right? You, you... Uh, don't don't. Whatever you tried eating, don't eat it. Just show it to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he kind of covers over the uh, over his mouth. Come through. Follow me in here, and he leads you into the bathroom. Okay. And. While there may have been uh, the the smoke, by the time you get in there, there doesn't seem to be any visible gas or anything, just kind of a little bit of lingering smell. Over there, on the other side of that uh, of the of the potty there, and he kind of just on the under there, yes, yes, there, there, and he kind of points and gestures and and, and forces you to kind of look down a little bit at, because I'm going to have modern plumbing in my medieval fantasy. God damn it, it's a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> a porcelain toilet, and on the side where he indicates it was, you can see this strange uh, uh, yellowish green lines drawn on the side of the toilet. But as you watch, they fade away. You see it? Yeah, it, they they disappeared. Uh, do you remember what they look like? Could you draw them out? Could I? Could for for the matter? Could I draw them out? Um. So. 
Ocean will say, I didn't see anything like that. I just saw the bag and the worms and the stuff, and I ran, and I retched, and it was awful. Um, for you, you kind of came in very late on this process. So I will say that you can make at disadvantage a, uh, a perception-type roll, but your difficulty is pretty high to remember it. So I'm going to set the difficulty at 18. Oof. Well, there is a natural one, so I'm not succeeding. And there's a three. Yeah, no, as you get in there, it's a so like, This smell is just too, too fucking horrible. Yeah, there's just like enough lingering, and, and your eyes are watering a little bit, and, and you're looking for the thing you thought you were going to find, which is some sort of bag or worms or goo or whatever the hell it was, and you find lines. There are lines. Do you speak uh, or do you read uh, uh, Abyssal, by the way? Nope. Okay, so yeah, it's just lines and, and circles and dots and curves, and then it's gone. And you're like, I don't, yeah, what the hell, though, that was thing. Um, this is where that somebody with a keen like a mind fe- fe- would, would, uh, would clean up today. But uh, <coughs> Zach is, yeah. It's true. It's true. <laughs> hey, not every feat can come in useful. And plus, you guys yeah. had uh, a, a whole bomb that I did, forgot you had. So it's like, how are they going to solve this problem? I don't know. They'll figure it out. Oh, look, they solved the problem. Might be something I gave them. Well, all right, that's fine. <laughs> that works, too. By something you gave us in the same episode that you gave us the problem. <laughs> Fair. Oh, well, yeah, technically the problem was the previous session or the end. Of the, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you, you, you only told us what the prizes were the, the, in the it's same true. session. It's true. You, you, usually those things happen like, oh, you have this thing from like months ago. It's true. It's true. No, it was a fair call. I, I really appreciate that. It actually makes me feel. Is really Annie good about around? It. Like, is is, is Annie uh, near the water? You watch? do see Annie, kind of. Uh, I think we'll, we'll we'll place you here, basically across the room, uh, still somewhat uh, retching and gagging, unable to move much closer. Um, hey, Annie, there's like some weird ass symbol in here. It's gone, but there was a weird ass symbol in here. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Um, people are milling about now, but now that uh, uh, Ocean I'll seems ask around, to be did fine anybody and, see that symbol? <laughs> uh, yeah, and people are like, they're kind of wondering what symbols you see in bathrooms uh, because they don't clearly see things in bathrooms. And so it looks as though the crowd is kind of like, he must have eaten something that didn't agree with them, or maybe he had too much wine, or knows what Triton actually gets sick by, but they're going to avoid that washroom for a while. Um, so the rest of the crowd kind of disperses with that much thought. Um, I, w- once the crowd kind of disperses, I will explain to Medric the situation with the dining room table Okay. okay. and Ju- something similar. Just the two of you together, or are you bringing anybody else in this conversation? You can find a spot. There's lots of spots to to sit if you want to be private, but it's more of do you want anybody else to talk with, like Melora or Dudek or any of the others? Yeah, Dudek, Verendel, and Melora would be like welcome, but anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Basically, I'm not. I'm not trying to like the the people who kind of know that we're kind of here to try to figure out what's going on. Um. Slash, who we've talked about weird things happening today. I'm fine with. Um, Okay. But, so you're not going to, well, I mean, you don't have to seek out um, Melora, Verendel, and No, but if Dudek, they want to show up, there. they think it. we're not going um, like, yeah. to tell them to go away. Yeah. Well, yeah. Two of them would be fairly close to you anyway, Melora and and, uh, and uh, Verendel. Dudek is kind of curious as well, and he knows that you guys seem to know more than what, more of what's going on, so he would be he would be kind of nosing in. Yeah. Um, and Dudek seems like a good dude, so. Um, you don't um, see the the goose, but she's probably somewhere, not too far away. If you wanted to find her, that was Celia, who was the one that found the uh, other bag with you. But if you don't mm-hmm. particularly include her, she's not happy to be there. No, uh, I'll I'll just explain that we figured out what was going on with the food. It was a similar description of what he said, a bag, and then it kind of exploded and left a symbol. And I I can grab the symbol when we get back because I I remember it vividly. I don't remember anything. I, there was like dots and lines, and then they disappeared. The, the smell was just overpowering. Yes, yes, it was. Um, luckily, I got out of the way, but I think we just saw what happens 
when you don't get out of the way. Yeah, uh, that was pretty horrible. Uh, do I know what disease that is, by the way? Um, you only rolled a 14, so you kind of knew right. it was disease, but not necessarily what specific one, and it vanished fairly quickly. You, you get rid of it. So it's hard to say. And there's no no normal cause of that sort of thing. So it's not like you can say, well, that's the disease caused by this. And it's like, well, no, he wasn't, he wasn't licking the taps. So we have no idea. Okay. I'm just um, glad I was able to take care of it fairly easily. You did very, very efficiently. And Ocean does thank you. Although Ocean has already kind of moved on <laughs> as well. Um, but yeah, it was definitely not a case of somebody eating bad food or drinking too much. Although he did eat the bad food, but it seemed to uh, agree with his, comp with his constitution. So. Yeah, but what what he, he explained was exactly what happened with the bag that was underneath the table that was causing the food to be bad. The food's not bad anymore, by the way. Oh, that, that's good because I'm getting kind of hungry. But uh, wait, so that was two bags full of worms and slime and gross shit. As they Should say in my profession, more? once is odd, twice is a pattern. There might be more. So should we start looking for these things? Possibly, Moreover, uh, should we start looking for whatever put them there? You don't think it was the Baron and Baroness? Seems like an odd thing to sabotage their own party that way. I, I'll look around to make sure they're not listening. I, I don't know. Uh, do you have any way of identifying these things or homing into wherever they might be located? I'll ask Dudok. Uh, or Dudek? Not the magic I typically deal with, I'm afraid. I do know a few spells that can do similar things to that, but I I didn't think to prepare anything like that today. At least we know what they look like, says Melora. I mean, if they both look the same, then maybe we can find another one. Yeah. And uh, from what uh, Ocean was saying, was the bag hidden? Yeah, it was kind of on the on the 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 side of the toilet, and it just happened to be the way that he was sitting and the way that he looked. He's, he's probably his long arms flopped down, and he kind of uh, uh, touched it a little bit, and then went, "Oh, hey, snack!" Grabbed it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Real uh, life me is like, no. I mean, what, from, uh, from Ocean's perspective, the idea that you would just sort of store snacks wherever you happen to be is pretty normal underwater. Yeah. Um, Toilets are actually much more strange to him than the bag was. But he's lived among land. Why don't we just... Enough. So there was one bag in the washroom, one bag in the kitchen. I wonder if there's a bag in, say, the library. Should we go check it out? Just look under every object or any place where something might be hidden. Should we split up and look in separate places? Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Maybe split up into to groups, basically. In case something happens. All right. You guys yeah, decide groups, what the definitely. groups are. You guys decide what the groups are. Medrisi, well, I mean, or, uh, Melora, Verandel, and, and Dudok will go wherever you want them to. You can send them all in one group if you want to, or split them up. I mean, going around with the people that, with our dates would work, and yeah. then they can. They, I mean, take... people can assume we're just like making out in the library. We're, we're, we're like really, we're just like searching for gross stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Same for you uh, and Durandell. <laughs> um, I don't know where to put Dudek, but he's he can uh, who, okay. choose, my, my... choose if he wants to come with, with one of us or go on his own. I'll take I a walk around. Deck. Maybe I can figure out if I know someone's doing something. Maybe I can figure out who it is. Are you sure it could be dangerous if you're by yourself, or or would you be staying next to? Would you be staying where there's witnesses? Uh well, I was planning to stay where there are other people. Yes. Now you make it sound a lot more dangerous. Also, don't if you find something, don't touch them because that that habit started to like happened when I touched it. Yeah, slimy bags full of worms are out right, right out. Yeah, don't don't touch it. And Verandel turns to Annie. Don't tell me that you uh, that I don't take you to the best parties. 
<laughs> it's been quite a fun time. <laughs> and with that, he'll offer his arm. Shall we? Yep. And we'll have you guys going off and looking. And I think uh, it has just turned six o'clock. Wow. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of running out of gas here a little bit. Um, I'm starting to get hungry, so. Yeah, so um, I'm going to bring this to a close for tonight. Um, yeah, so you'll begin with the search next time. And I'll, I nice. I had warned you guys there might be a shift. Looks like the shift will come out afterwards for next session, uh, potentially. We'll see what happens coming up next. Uh, but uh, I want to uh, let's just switch back to our main page here so. Everybody can see your, your wonderful faces. I want to thank you guys for putting up with this weird adventure <laughs> that <laughs> that I'm also struggling with. Because I love all my NPCs too much. Damn it. I have to have them show up from time to time. And I should know better than I like your them NPCs too. <laughs> I should know better than have them showing up at the same time all the time. Like I have a list full of your NPCs from the first session. From the first uh, campaign. Well, and, and you know. I I'm, still have that spreadsheet, yes. Yeah, no, that's and you've got a whole lot of names I know from this uh, couple of sessions that have been added onto your list, but they'll all be uh, real people to you, those that survive. Um, uh, the other thing I will say, the only other last thing I will say is for Silas and the group upstairs. As you're beginning your discussion, you're starting to hear now that the guards are starting to go room by room. So you do know that you have some privacy for the moment, but it is very, very limited. So I'll let you think on on where where or what you want to do next from there. Um, other than that, uh, thanks uh, those of you who might be watching at home, either live on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 or, or watching the replay on uh, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, uh, and we will do this again in two weeks, uh, and we will determine, uh, we'll probably get to the bottom of this mystery, and then we'll figure out that there's a trap door that leads to another mystery, and then get to the bottom of that one, and then they'll be dancing again. I can't promise any of that. But... Well, uh, there will be chaos. There will oh, yeah. definitely be chaos. Uh, but thanks thanks to my players as well. I hope you guys had had fun. Thanks for running. And we will bring it to an end. <laughs>